This episode is brought to you by Mack Weldon Clothing. And you know what I love about Mack Weldon Clothing, Mason? What? Well, I love their smart design, their premium fabrics, and their simple shopping. If I had to condense it to three things that I thought of off the top of my the head. The things you just said then? Yeah, that's what, that's what I would do. Uh-huh. Can yeah. you think of another thing? Well, no, I was going to say that before we started this ad, you said that I could sit out of this ad in protest. <laughs> yes. But here's the thing. I choose not to because I bloody love Mack Weldon. <laughs> <laughs> you, were on the, you were on tenterhooks for a second. I then, certainly was, Mason. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it's a great website in terms of a shopping experience. It's very... It's very easy to access. You know, some websites are just I know some websites. total shit. Yeah. This is a good one. Clean interface. Mm-hmm. It's yep. not cluttered. You know what you're looking for. Exactly. You know what it's I mean? It's not it's, any, it's not a bloody, it's, a, it's not a mess. You're not like, well, I want to buy two shirts and I'm going to have to go through five menus to get to add another shirt. It's just none it's of that. easy. Clicky, clicky, click. You've bought some shirts. That's right. And speaking of shirts mm-hmm. and all their products really in general, they're naturally antimicrobial, mm-hmm. which basically means, hey, you know that odor that you it might means, get. Hey. hey, I'm a shirt. That's what it means. Yeah, no, it means they they last longer. You can wear them for longer because they don't smell weird. You can wear them. You know, you can get a bloody bit of extra use out of them. Wears out of them. Yeah, I definitely. Yeah, re- you know, recommend. None hey, of us no, here I recommend that. None of us here are millionaires. We we can get, we we're okay with getting a couple of wears out of a shirt. We're okay with it. Mm-hmm. Also, they want you to be comfortable. So if you don't like your first pair, you can keep it, and they'll refund you. And they won't ask any questions. They won't shoot you any emails. No one's coming to your house. Don't even worry about it. Okay. Mm, except to deliver more delightful shirts. Almost certainly. Mm-hmm. Now, look, not only does Mac-, Mac Weldon do underwear and socks and shirts that look good, they also perform well too. They're good for working out, which I can attest to, Mason, as a man who's in his physical prime. I thought you were going to say as a man in his 40s. <laughs> I wouldn't believe either. <laughs> going to work, going on dates, just everyday life. Just everyday life. So if you go to MacWeldon.com, you can actually get 20% off using promo code PLANET. Uh, I highly recommend their t shirts. They're just very good, and they, they are fit very really good. well. And they're this, good. They're good quality. They're trim, but they're not. They're not. They're ba- not tight. They're not, they're not baby gap kind they're of not, situation. That's exactly you know? right. Uh-huh. Uh, so that's MacWeldon dot com. Twenty uh, percent off with promo code Planet. Highly recommend it. That's the ad. Let's do the rest of the show. What's up? I'm no, bringing that back. No, yeah, don't. No, I don't think you have the power to do that. No, I'm doing it. So it's really up to you, Mason. All right, we'll see. It's up to how well everybody receives uh-huh. me doing it. Oh, yeah, that's true. Okay, yeah. we'll see how many tweets we get. Great. Mm-hmm. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. I hope you like bloody... I've gone off script. I shouldn't have done that. I'm lost. Uh, <laughs> Do you want to start again? No. Or you can find your way back. With me as always, you my get... co-host. Okay. I may miss some stuff in there. I think you missed Nick some stuff. Mason. I'm here. Yeah, man. That's what I see. See, all I have to do every week is go, I'm here. <laughs> That's right. I don't even have to contribute to the episode in a lot of cases. Nah. A lot of the time, I don't say anything. You just get archival audio <laughs> from me from previous episodes, and you just plug it in, including this bit right here, because I've done it before. I think... I've gone off script. I've left <laughs> I've, I've walked out on the studio before and you've just taken this bit from the other time I did it. <laughs> I think Topop did that recently on an episode. I haven't listened to it, but I think Mikhail, or Mikhail, sorry, assembled like an episode of previous clips. I'm, I don't know whether, I, I saw some stuff on Twitter about it, so I got to check it out. So not a best of, but a... I think it's, yeah, it's like a, a trick. Like, like, a, trick. A, like a Google Deep Dream artificial intelligence exactly. fake episode. Wow. That's exactly right. Wow. But the reason, Mason, I may be off my game, a little bit thrown, is because I'm really excited because we just recorded our tour of the podcast studio. <laughs> what did we ever? going up on the... On the, uh, if you've donated to the UNICEF, not you know, why do I keep saying that? It's not UNICEF, Mason. They're you need garbage. To, you, need to, <laughs> you need to slap me with a wet newspaper every time I say that. I'm too far away and I don't have a wet newspaper. <laughs> okay. I could, I could slap you with this wet couch cushion that the dog keeps licking. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Okay, I can I'll do, do it later. But basically, Care Australia, Care Australia uh, for raising money for women and girls across the world. Well, I think that it's got a big jump this week because the Q&A is going out this week along with a bunch of bonus podcasts from other people on the network. Yeah, Tofop's uh, doing one. Tofop's doing Matt one. Matt Stewart is doing Matt one. Matt Stewart did, did one. There's a bunch of others. Uh, we're also doing a second part to a Q&A because we didn't get to all the questions. And I feel mm. like even with part two, we probably still won't get through all the questions. <laughs> but we're going to give it a bloody red hot go. So that's about, I think it's about an hour 45 and there's a short tour of where we work. It's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's look... It's not work. Yeah, to work. 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 Yeah. Look, if you're donating just for that, you'll be thoroughly disappointed. <laughs> just, just donate if you want to do a nice thing. I guess. I bet one of the people, because there's some people who have been very, very generous and have donated, you know, a hundred fifty dollars or a hundred dollars mm. or two hundred dollars. I hope none of those people were like, 
look, I can ask him questions anytime I want on Twitter. This is for the studio tour. That's right, yeah. This is for the Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory uh, tour of the amazing dream factory that, that they put together the podcast in. It's one room. Yeah. There's a couch in it. It's basically the box factory from that episode of The Simpsons. <laughs> it really is. It's about that level but of But look, I enjoyed, I enjoyed filming it. Yeah. Uh, we lose a little bit of steam towards the end because your phone ran out of storage and we had to start again. But then we got it done, Then we got we? it done, yeah. That's, that's right. That's it. I just saw this week as well, somebody called Tristan donated $762. <laughs> so there's some big numbers here. Lucas, Bloody 436. Hell. Michael, uh, 327. Yes, Greg, can we help you? Yes, I just... Was, was it Tristan? Tristan? Yeah. I just did, you, did that, you, Claire! Just, you, Are you kidding me? You, no, I appreciate that. Thanks, Claire. Yeah. yeah. Also, she made the artwork that um, the Indians here. Oh, really? It's real cool. You know, the I love that. that I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, the yeah. one that looks like a fancy watch edge. Yeah. yeah. Well. Cool. I know, what a legend. Excellent. Okay. Goodbye. Bye, Claire. Thanks for just interrupting for no reason. <laughs> Bloody. Oh, no, she's back. <laughs> <laughs> No, she's a good sport. She's, she's like, like the third character on the show. I'll tell you what, Mason. Uh, yeah. You can't bloody stop her. Can't stop her. Uh, so anyway, that's going out today if you're listening today. It was supposed to go out Thursday when it was supposed mm-hmm. to go out, but uh, we emailed it through and the people at the website were like, no problem, we'll get it out Monday. And it was like, what? Because <laughs> we told everyone this week. So uh, it's, it's it should be out today. Terrific. Hey, also th- something that's out uh, today. Yeah. should be out by now if you're listening to this on Monday. Mm. Uh, I was on an episode of a Gamey Game oh, Game. Oh, yeah. runs. The, the YouTube uh, show about video games by our friend Evan over at Stupid Old Studios. He hosts it. Uh, and I had, we had, it was me mm-hmm. and uh, comedians Ben Russell and Naomi Higgins. All wonderfully funny people. Very Mason. funny. We had a bloody, bloody good time. What's the video game? Did you mostly talk about? We talked about, about Spider-Man. Yeah. The new Spider-Man games, yes, yes. which is convenient because that's the first game I've played the in many years. Played, yes. Well, the first good game I've played in many sure, years. Sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we talked a little bit, a bit about Dead Cells, which is a uh, indie game that's yes, out now. Yes, yes. And like a, like a Metroidvania a bit of kind of... controversy behind that one. Is there? Yeah, because uh, the guy, I won't get into it. But basically, the guy writing... I'm getting into it. Yeah, the guy, really. <laughs> the guy writing... You're a man of contrast. Indeed. The guy who wrote the review for IGN just ripped off his oh, review. Oh, that's right. And people went through... And he's like, it was just a mistake or whatever. Try and find evidence of me doing that again. And there's just dozens of, <laughs> of reviews that... I dare you to find it. Don't actually, <laughs> Don't though. say that. Oh, I called you... my bluff. Yeah. Uh, we talked, so we talked about Dead Cells. And apparently, there's a new Leisure Suit Larry game coming Ugh. out. Which... Look, I'm against because it's Leisure Suit Larry, but I am for it because it's, it's the fascinating. Ret- the ret- well, it's fascinating, but also because I think it. Well, I'm hoping that it's a game where he learns a lesson, <laughs> like he because he's coming into the modern era from like the 80s. So yeah. I guess it's kind of like maybe he'll figure out that his old ways. Maybe that's the the run of the game, but maybe it isn't. Yeah, I don't know. maybe that's it, Mason. Yeah. <laughs> I think it might be though. Well, okay. Right? Well, Would they show a trailer or anything? There's nothing in it. Okay. There's one really, really poorly timed joke. And I don't mean content-wise, like the timing's off. It's like, it it turns out I have the biggest, and then there's a long pause, like too long for it to be funny, and then the bartender's like, hey, this is a family establishment, and then there's another long pause, too long for it to be comedy, and then he goes, smile in town. Like, it's the... the, I reckon that's probably a good joke, and you butchered it, to be honest. (laughs) The setup... And the punchline is so far apart that you forget what the setup was. <laughs> like four minutes? Yeah, like four minutes. <laughs> wow. Anyway, we're talking about that. But but I'm 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 hoping this is, means it's a return to point and click adventure games. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because as a man who was always terrible at every other form of video game. Yeah. The point and click adventure game is my, that's my jam. jam. It's my jam, exactly. Good. Excellent. So we're talking about that. And uh, that's yeah, it was a bloody Great. good old time. I'll link it below along yes. with the QA. So if you if you yeah, if you link that below or if you want to go to YouTube, just type in gamey gamey game mm. and it's the bloody and if everybody could uh, maybe maybe watch it and get those download numbers up, uh, maybe they'll have me back. <laughs> well they won't. I don't think they will. Oh no, come on, yeah, mate. Yeah. Evan messaged me after it was it's well, not good. It's oh not good, no. Mason. Oh yeah. man. <laughs> You said your timing was off. Oh, the jokes. Man. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just did that Leisure Suit Larry joke <laughs> over and over again for 48 <laughs> minutes. So, uh, Speaking of things that are off, Mason, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, Venom, the Venom movie. Now that's uh, still got a right. rating. I saw uh, an ad on a bus for it. Wow. You mm-hmm. know, it's serious then, mm-hmm. isn't it, Mason? Uh, it's got a PG-13 rating. Oh, it's off. It's, it's a, look, rating isn't indicative of 
anything. And I think also because the American... But it's going to be bad. Yeah, it's going to be bad. The American rating system is slightly different from ours. Mm. So like this would be, in Australia, this I guess would be the equivalent of like M. Like an M15. With like an M15, which is sort of like some adult content. Yeah. But not really. But in Australia, PG is like... Like a Pixar. I think we or have a PG thirteen here as well. Okay, maybe we do. I don't no, know. No. I don't, this is the thing. I don't think about it because I don't need to. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah, so... yeah. And over and in America, we had they have R, which here is MA fifteen plus. Oh, okay, is that how it works? I okay, think so, gotcha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So basically, they. I think there was talk of maybe they're going to do a, uh, a, a an extended unrated cut, a, oh, right. a sexy cut for. It uh, seems. Go you go ahead. That's all I have to say. Well, I was going to say that it, it feels like this. Is maybe like an like an attempt at double dipping. Like it's like, well, everybody will see it at the cinemas, and yeah. then they'll buy it again on DVD because it'll be raunchier, yeah, and yeah. sexier with so. more tendrils. But I think that's going to backfire. Yeah. I think it's going to be, well, I'm not going to see it in cinemas, mm. and I'm going to steal it off the internet. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, I think, and I think I mentioned this last week or week before when we talked about it. It might have an initial. Uh, it might do well initially, better than it would if it was an R or whatever. Yeah, right. An R rating. But then if it's toned down and not as good, then the next one won't do as good. Yeah, so right. So I think it's better to do a good movie with a higher rating, like say like Deadpool did. Yeah. And then you build your audience based off that. But what do we know? We don't make these movies. No, we haven't crushed the Spider-Man franchise multiple times. I mean, <laughs> I mean people haven't seen our tour of the studio video yet. Yeah. So, that could go viral. I feel. I think it probably could, it could yeah. hit cinemas. Yeah. Well, you when we fin- we finished recording it, and you were like, "Was that any good?" And I'm like, "Well, <laughs> no, I'm, no, it wasn't." But I mean, also, <laughs> it's not. One of the, it's not like you know when you f- you see a video on the internet and it's like worst interview fails ever, and it's you know that's all. Anytime we talk to anybody famous, yeah, or all I want is for us not to end not up to on one that. of those compilations, yeah. right? To be forgotten. That's what you want. That's what I want to be forgotten. Yeah, exactly. I get you, man. Mm-hmm. Speaking of something that might be forgotten. Oh, you're so good at links today. Thanks, Mason. Mm. Uh, Henry Cavill might not be Superman anymore, according to one report. But then again, he might also still be Superman for now. All of this is unconfirmed. And I can go through the series of events if you want. If you or, could. Uh, do you want to? Do you have anything to say up top, though? Uh, it's see, Look, it strikes me at the, from what I... The version that I... The version that was explained to me is that... They wanted him to be in a, a cameo in Shazam as Superman. Yep. And he couldn't do it for some reason. I think it was Mission Impossible again. <laughs> oh, terrific. Um, well, they were doing the gag reel for Mission Impossible. And they yes. were like, yeah, you can't, I can't make it to Shazam. So apparently, and then it seems like as revenge, somebody leaked the idea that he was quitting or something like yeah. that. that. That's what I hear. Right. But then I also saw an, maybe an Instagram post Henry Cavill put up that said he wasn't. It's very it? non-committal, that post. Uh, okay, if you, well, let's let's go through we'll the go events through and we'll make a... We'll, we'll finally determine the real answer, bearing in mind we're never right. No, that's right. I mean, yes, that's right. Whatever the thing is you said, mm. that's what it is. Mm-hmm. Also, we never listen to each other. <laughs> and why should we? Mm-hmm. Basically, like you said, there was this report. It was said that he was let go. Uh, and he didn't shoot Imagine his... Imagine that. Oh, yeah. Would this, would this be the first time a superhero actor's been let go? No. Terrence Howard. There's been a lot of them. Actually, I've got to... a video on it. As soon as you finish... As We're as doing as a finish... video on it this week, actually. Oh. We haven't recorded it yet. As but... soon as I finish saying it, I'm like, no, there's, there's probably there's tons. There's so many. Yeah. I mean, the last Superman was also let go, yeah, I guess, point. also. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But uh, then this was from this is from his his rep said whilst no decision decision has been made regarding any upcoming Superman films we've always had great respect for and a great relationship with Henry Cavill and that remains unchanged. So so that, this is an official statement. Yes. Okay. Uh, he then issued a really weird vague response on Twitter uh-huh. on Instagram where some classical music is playing and he shows a picture of Superman and then he I mean a toy of Superman and then he takes it away. And that's okay, it. Right. Nobody really knows what that means. Just explain yourself, Henry Cavill. What are you doing? What is he or doing? Or Cavill. Explain <laughs> yourself Cavill. and explain which way your name is pronounced. It's like right? travel. Cavill. Yeah, like Cavill. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Okay, right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. Right. And the thing is, there's no active Superman movies in development. Yeah, right. So if I was him also, why the fuck would you hang around to do two-minute cameos 
in every second DC movie. Exactly. And then yeah. make a Justice League movie in six years because everyone hated the last one. Except for me, I thought it was a delight. We both did actually from memory. No, I don't like it at all. It's we bad. both had a fun time with it. Let's no, just leave it at that. No. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm happy to leave it back. It's on Netflix now. So we're, Is it? Yeah, we're going to get to yeah, it. Yeah, we're going to do that commentary. We'll do a commentary. Yeah, yeah. And also, he's going to be Geralt in The Witcher. Yeah. I, think, I, th- I believe that character has a full beard. Sometimes. So, I think the so, book version doesn't. Okay, right. I'm so are they going to cameo him in every time and. Oh, what if they cameo him in every time and it's just worse and worse CGI <laughs> to, to get rid of the beard? Or like he does it Plan 9 from Outer Space style. He's got his cape over his face <laughs> every time he's doing a cameo. You know what's ridiculous? If people had have listened to us from the very beginning about Justice League Mason, let me just say this. When Superman returns from the death of Superman, he's got a mullet and I think also then you could have given him a beard. beard. And if he had a beard, then you could easily CGI on the rest of the beard if he had a mustache for Mission Impossible. Correct, yes. You had an out, mm-hmm. you had it. A year before you started filming, but you didn't do it. You blew it. And look, it. the movie still turned out great, and we're both happy with the way it turned out. We're not. <laughs> you tried to sneak that in there. You tried to. You, you said some things, some things that I would easily agree with, and you snuck in a thing that I disagreed with. But I caught you. I caught you red-handed in the act. You son of a bitch. But no, you're right because it. Just, he's had a beard before. He's had a beard. He had a beard at the start of Man of Steel. Just do it. Say do the same thing. Yeah, and then. You do a joke at the end where he beats bloody Steppenwolf or whatever, and he's like, "Well, time to get rid of this beard." Ha <laughs> ha! And we all laugh, and we then all they, laugh, yeah. And then they race around the world or whatever. Yeah, and then if you do take the the mustache or the beard off, you do it for one scene, and you you know you take the time <laughs> you do right. it, to do it. Yeah, properly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Uh, so I can understand why he would step away from that. So if even this is all rumors, and it's also it's looking more and more likely that Ben Affleck is also not coming back. So yep. this is a universe where there's. Uh, active Wonder Woman and uh, Aquaman movies happening. Probably The Flash, though. I'm not counting on that happening because it hasn't started yet, so let's not say anything. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, the joke is happening, but that's in another universe. Yep. And there's no word on a Justice League movie. The Batman movie looks like it's going to be a prequel with somebody else, which we'll talk There's got more news and on And there's that. hundreds of Harley Quinn properties <laughs> yes, currently right. on the boil. Yeah, yeah. But uh, they also, one of the names that came up, and the internet lost it, was Michael B. Jordan for, for Superman. Of, of Human Torch and uh, Killmonger fame. Correct. Uh I think that'll be fine. I yep. mean, they nearly did it with Will Smith at one point as well when yeah, he, right. in like uh-huh. the early 2000s. And it, what they could do to get around people who are really upset, there is a black Superman. There is, yeah. There's also a Chinese Superman. You could do a different versions of Superman and say they're just different. Yeah, right. If you, if you, you, know, if you were really worried what people... Exactly. Real T- just test it. run it with Michael B. Jordan. Yeah. And if it works, put him in and just be like, I'm the Superman from another universe. Yeah. Or, whatever. or just say it's, the, it's a parallel universe in which everybody's basically the same, except it's a different Superman. Yeah. And then you can that then it, it, pre-existing Henry Cavill Superman still exists if mm. you want to exactly you wanna put you him wanna, back. I also think that that's just a name that always comes up. You know, yeah, I right. imagine for uh-huh. most properties they're like, well, he's really good, so we should just get him. Yeah. Like, I'm sure there's a hundred people on that list, for and sure, it just yeah. happens to be the one of them that. Yeah. Also, again, that's a rumor. But the other reason they're also putting him aside is uh, and Superman in general, because the other reason, the other thing also, there are no Superman movies in development. Right, exactly. Moment. There are hundreds of movies in development at Warner Brothers. None of them are Superman. Right. None of them, which is crazy. I think they think that Superman isn't popular and he doesn't make money because the movies he's, he's in, like Man of Steel, did okay, but they wanted mm. to do Dark Knight, and it did okay. Batman Superman underperformed. Still made a lot of money. Justice League was a fucking disaster. <laughs> we both had fun with it. Let's not no, get into not, it. No, 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 no. <laughs> You've done it again. You've done that thing you're doing. And people might think, oh, well, they might think, well, that Superman is not the thing that's working. Superman doesn't work in a lot of those movies, but it's not because of the actor. It's because of the material, it seems, a lot of the time. Correct. And if you just make a good one, yeah. people will like it. I think that, but I also think that the reason that people are up in like an uproar about Michael B. Jordan potentially as Superman is because what if that's the one where the movie is good? Yeah, right, yeah. And then certain people would be like, well, uh, okay, you know, that's... How how dare they take away our Superman and finally make a good one? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Absolutely. Mm. But uh, so the focus also is going to be on Supergirl, which is a movie they are apparently moving forward with. With Henry Cavill in with the Henry lead. Henry Cavill in the lead, which is exciting, I think. Yeah. Uh, they live in the mustache for this one. They've learnt from their mistakes. That's right. Exactly. Just go for it. Supergirl's a modern woman. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> you can do what you want. Uh, that's a movie I do want to see. I don't watch the the show anymore. But uh-huh. but they also did. Disp- I think some people ask this on Twitter. Maybe I just saw it on Twitter. Does that mean maybe Superman could get his own TV series? Because they've got him in the CW universe. He exists. That's true. So and he's very charming in that. He's good in that. Mm-hmm. I would say he's, he's not 
I don't think he looks as much like Superman as some of the others. Right. But I think he does, a, from what I saw, he does a really good job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if we're getting a Supergirl movie, there was a rumor also that the villain is going to be Brainiac, which I think is great. Same. Works well. Bottled City of Candor. Yeah, mm-hmm. that, that's because that's where she's from. And do you want to see is. robot Brainiac, or do you want to see green alien Brainiac? I want to see robot, and then you think it's the real one, but then you see the real one. Oh, so that's what do you want to wow. say? Ah, uh, I want to see. Oh, I I would say the first one I encountered as a kid was robot Brainiac. Yeah, and so I kind of want that one, but that's it's hard, like it's difficult. Empathizing with robot face Brainiac, I would think. Yeah, right. So I reckon maybe Green Alien one. The one in uh, Krypton, yeah, which I like. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I don't know whether that's a popular or standard opinion, <laughs> but it's good. Okay. They and he's robot Brainiac. No, but he does like infect people's minds and whatever. I think there's probably maybe there is a robot part of him, but then you see the actual Brainiac and it's oh, oh it's it's quite good. Yeah. So wait, so the Brainiac spoilers, I guess, for Krypton, sure. a show that I haven't seen. Well, so it's uh, a prequel. You know what ends. Oh, yeah, good point. <laughs> so the, the version you see as Brainiac is a green alien guy. Yes. But he's not the actual Brainiac. No, no, you do see the actual guy. But uh, that's what I'm saying. So yeah. is the version you see with the green alien face, mm. is he somebody that Brainiac has possessed? There is that, but then you see Brainiac, Brainiac. And also. he's green. Yeah, unless it's also not him, because who knows? Mm-hmm. But it, it look, I think it is, and it looks, it looks good. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, but definitely Skull Ship. Yeah, and also the skull ships in that nice, show as well. It looks nice, really good. Nice. I like that show. Look, a lot of it's running down the same dimly lit street. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, but <laughs> they built one set. They built one set. But I like that show. Mm. Whether oh not- no, this time the gravity's been reversed. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to run down the same street, but we're upside down. <laughs> the roof looks exactly the same as the floor. <laughs> Another bit of DC news is that uh, this is a rumor that uh, Kit Harrington was a front runner for Batman. That was a rumor which his reps have denied, but... Uh, Again, it's probably, if his name was mentioned, everybody's name is probably mentioned. For sure, yeah. I'm sure they just went, okay, what What are some hit movies and TV shows? Mm. Okay, these ones. Okay, who could make the jump from TV yeah. to movies? Kid Harrington? Sure, why not? I think he'd be a way better Nightwing. Yeah. Even build-wise. Like, he's not a tall guy. He's like 5'7 or whatever. Okay, right. Which I don't think is really a problem for Batman. It doesn't really matter. You can make him look whatever size they need to uh-huh. be. Yeah. But, no, I think he'd be a better Nightwing. What do you think? I think it'd be a better Nightwing, but also I think that the size of the actor alters the public perception of the character. I think, right? Okay. Like, because if you do like a casting call, yeah, and everybody's like six two, mm. like he's standing next to Jason Momoa and he's, yeah, you know, the FF, very, very tiny. I yeah. think people would be like, "Is this our new Batman?" It's like when they changed James Bonds, yeah, and they were like, "Daniel Craig is he's blonde and he's wearing a life jacket on a boat. <laughs> what a pansy!" <laughs> Remember when they did that? I, I I still think real life actor Daniel Craig could kill all the other ones. Yeah, that's uh, exactly. Sean Connery in his prime. He probably did a lot of bar fighting, didn't he? Probably Sean Connery now. Yeah, probably. Actually, yeah. I don't know. I think uh, I think we're just not going to hear from Sean Connery. Then he's going to die. That's how that's going to go. All right. He seems, he seems <laughs> okay. very old. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Swamp Thing apparently the TV series is going to get a hard R and it's going to use a practical suit, Ooh. which I think is good. Okay. Do you think people will fall in love with it like they do with? You know, the Lost in Space robot and the monsters from Stranger <laughs> Things. You know how people love all that? I guess so, but I mean, Swamp Thing can talk, so... That's true. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, people fall in love with this stuff. They're like, ooh, it's, it's, everything's thick and sexy. Oh, you know, I see what you're what saying. Okay, right, right, right. I see, right, right. You're, you're saying, well, people want to want to do a sex on the Swamp yeah. Thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. fact, there's probably people who have been waiting for 20 years to see a live-action version of that. Aren't... You? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think it's based on... You? Uh, what? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you? <laughs> I think it's based off the Alan Moore Okay, run, great. Mm-hmm. Which I think I've read. I've read oh, the first does that mean? Does that mean John Constantine appearance? I hope so. I hope not. What's in what universe, though? Also, well, Batman's in that one. Not the Constantine universe. Yeah, that's true. Batman's in that one as well, isn't he? Yes. Because he, cause doesn't he take over Gotham and Batman... I can't ...comes remember. in with like a, like a sweet as Batman be like... Like <laughs> like a like, like a wheat thresher. Yeah, exactly. Meal. And then uh-huh. Swamp Thing just like thumps him because I don't can, remember that bit. But all right. everywhere. Uh-huh. I, think, I think those are the early issues. Uh, but the DC streaming service did launch only in the US this week. I wasn't going to get it anyway. Yeah, right. Initially, at least, uh, all the animated stuff and a bunch of the movies. Yeah, Apparently, yeah. the comic selection is limited at the moment. Okay, right. But when it, I would definitely be interested to check it out. Yeah. When, see what 
it's gonna I don't be. think they even because today is uh, today or possibly yesterday is Batman Day. Oh yeah, I don't know. Why. Happy Batman Day! I'm, assu- Mac. I'm assuming it's because of the- it's everything needed day. Not really. It's everything needed day. I assume, Mason. I assume, I assume it's because this is the the anniversary of the publication of Detective Twenty Seven or Batman Number One or something like that. Uh, could be Michael, Michael Keaton's birthday. Could, could be, be Michael Keaton's birthday or Michael Caine's birthday. Mm. Val Kilmer's birthday. Yeah. Oh, what if man. they pick Val Kilmer's birthday? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I saw a tweet from them and they're like, we've got a huge selection of Batman movies. Not all of them. Oh, really? Yeah, it was like... What, what don't they have? They had they had Batman, they had like 89, they had Batman Ninja, they had Dark Knight. I think they had all the Nolan movies. Not all the Nolan I don't movies. I so, yeah. I guess once you put them all on there, where do you go from there? Exactly. There's no more surprises. Yeah. Just put them all on there. Just put them all... Maybe they do. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they ran out of characters in the tweet. It's very possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, are you going to get it? No. Okay. Oh, uh, how much is it a month? I have no idea. I think it's like maybe it's eighty bucks a year or something like that. Okay, right. I don't know that though. Look, if the first month is free, I think maybe I'll get in there and like do a deep dive on the comic books yeah. and see if there's some old gems I've forgotten. Sure. What about if it's the, the second month's also free? I'll keep it for the second month. Okay. What if the first month first month is you pay for that, but then the second month is, is free? free. Oh, interesting tactic. Thank you. I'm trialing it for this show. Oh, sorry. <laughs> So do I pay you now? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna okay. roll it out to everybody. Okay, cool. Uh yes, I would still pay. Okay. Mm-hmm. What if the first month is not free, but yep. the second month is double, and then the remaining months are the same regular price? I'm not hearing any free months in that. Well, it if, seems if, like if I'm paying a lot. The, if you quit after the first month, yeah. then you get that free month still. But if you really like it, then you got to pay double for the second month. So, oh, so, so the first you, month is free. But then the second month is double. But then the remaining months after that are regular price. A regular priced. price. Now, I'm not hearing any... It's free if you quit. But if you really like it, then you end up paying for Paying a month. lot more, yeah. Not a lot more. The same amount as if you didn't get a free month. It sounds bad, if I'm honest with you. Okay. But I'm in. Anyway, we're rolling it out. You're, <laughs> the, you're, <laughs> you're the trial. And okay, true. Right, I'll just go get my wallet. All right. <laughs> uh... I think that's pretty much the news. It wasn't huge for this week. I probably I feel like I've missed something, but is there anything else from this week? Look, I'll I'll check Twitter and I'll see if anybody's tweeted anything fun at us. Okay. All right, here we go. Here we go. Listener We do get a lot of people sending us the Australia is a hoax. Uh, oh, every day we get, that. get yeah. that. We know. We know it's yeah, a hoax. We, yeah. Yep. I don't have anything to say about it other than <laughs> I think that's I think very few people believe that. I think it's just got traction because it's dumb. And mm-hmm. if you do believe that the fuck's wrong with you? <laughs> Get on a plane. How about that? <laughs> a few things. Oh, there, there is one more bit of news, I guess. There's a Captain Marvel trailer that's coming this week. Yeah. It'll be out Tuesday uh, time in the US. I actually find, found out before, and I was going to be like, I can drop that on the show. I'd be like, boom. Uh huh. But, but then everybody then it found out. <laughs> so. Now, now, some time ago, you made a very bold proclamation about the the release range of I the cut trailer. Out. Oh, did you? Okay. Mm. And are you then going to cut this out? No. Nah. Okay. So basically, <laughs> last week... I the date was coming. Yep. And I hadn't got it confirmed yet. So I we recorded the segment and I recorded every date for two weeks. Yep. And then I was gonna plug in the correct date. And it was an absolute shambles. Uh-huh. But then I didn't end up finding the date, so I took it out. Oh, you took the whole thing I took out. The whole thing out. Could you put it in now? I think people need to hear it. I, I'd have to go find it. It's, it's a pro- whole just um, I just it would just I'd have to I, I don't even I'd have to find the files and what okay, I a lot of time I just wipe stuff for, for All right, for okay. Me. I could look at but probably just, not. Just listeners, just just know that it was a real ordeal. <laughs> Do you want me to put the whole thing in? Yes. I'll see if I can find it. I probably right. can't find it. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so Captain Marvel will be next week. So we'll probably be talking a lot about that. But mm-hmm. we're also having to do a superhero showdown. or a, It's not superheroes, it's anything. For people who don't know, they're our Versus episodes where you people tweet or email in or go on the Weekly Planet Reddit or the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates group and they pit two characters against each other mm-hmm. and then we decide who is the winner all yep. answers are final. Uh, you cannot dispute them. You can, but we don't care. <laughs> no, don't bother. <laughs> don't add us. No, I don't mind. I actually don't mind hearing people's uh, opinions. And the idea is that uh, that basically it's just a bit of bloody fun. The idea is that life contains winners and losers. Yeah, and we determine... And we determine who is who. But only in this specific scenario. Not in any other situation <laughs> or in real life. No. That's it. Uh, the other thing... We, we did last time, which I thought we could do again, is ultimatums, which is basically give us a hypothetical scenario and we'll determine what that the answer <laughs> may be. What was a good one that we had last time? I really enjoyed them. There was a the Harrison Ford earring one. There was uh, would you rather, I believe it was would you rather 
uh, tell Harrison Ford he can't fly his plane anymore mm. and attempt to take away his pilot's license or tell Harrison Ford that his earring is stupid yeah. and, and attempt to physically remove it from him. That's right. Yeah, so something like that. Something, something along like those that. lines. That's it. Know. So is this episode going to be a free-for-all? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Uh-huh. Yeah, so just okay. anybody. It can be anybody fictional, living. <laughs> vehicles versus vehicles. We can do that. Concept versus concept. Absolutely. Literary figures That's fighting right. each other. A lot of the time it's... They've got the standard stuff that they'd have on them, unless you specify. So if Correct. you say Doctor Who, he's got his sonic screwdriver, but he probably doesn't have his TARDIS unless he calls for it. Mm-hmm. But he wouldn't have it with him immediately. It wouldn't I guess. be in his butt. But you could be like, Doctor Who, but he has a flamethrower if you wanted to. <laughs> you could do whatever you want. Yeah, okay. We can do... <laughs> look, we can do an entire episode that it's it's just standard issue characters, but everybody's got a flamethrower. <laughs> Who's willing to use that? You know? <laughs> Is Do- would Doctor Who kill a ma- another man with a flamethrower? Yeah, probably. Wow. Yeah, an I guess alien it would depend. Definitely. I guess it would depend which Doctor. Yeah. Somebody suggested, I can't, I don't have it on, but I think it was the A.M. Aldous. It was same rules, except, and, and you know, heroes versus heroes or heroes versus villains, except everybody has a blistering hangover. <laughs> and it's quite early in the morning. Oh, man. Some people would thrive under that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like Ben Affleck Batman. Yep. He was he was hung over that entire movie. He I don't mean in real life. I mean they worked that into because he is in rehab. I mean as in they worked that into the narrative. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like Mad Max, I feel like would do really well. Just constantly dehydrated wouldn't affect him at That's all. That's very true. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. It's interesting. Mm. Anyway, you can specify any kind of <laughs> physical. <laughs> we're really uh... <laughs> we're really broadening this one out. Yeah. If you if you've always wondered what two characters what of two characters who would win in a fight when they have varying levels of sobriety or hungoverness yeah throw it in captain america can't get drunk can he no nah. really it's in the movies wolverine also can't get drunk there you go yeah so there you go oh okay but what if they're magically drunk or hungover well that's a good point well, that, that needs to be specified obviously yeah that's true yeah. flash also can't get drunk huh so there you go all right mason What's really exciting about this week is we get to talk about The Predator, the box office opening. They thought they were, it was going to do about $32 million, which would have been good for an R-rated film. This is US numbers we're talking. That, also, hit, that seems low for a blockbuster. For an R-rated one, it's not bad. Right. Uh, but it, it, it did about 25 which is okay, mm-hmm. which is fine. Uh, can I just quickly tell you the story of how I saw this movie? Yes. Uh, so we were supposed to go on Thursday, Wednesday. Uh-huh. I couldn't go for various reasons, but you went along. You met the Predator, which was nice. I did meet the Predator, you yes. Put something on, on the gram. Mm-hmm. What was he like? Silent. And not as tall as you'd think. Hollywood ends a bit of height. I bet it I? does. Did he have the feet and all, or did he just have regular boots no, on? He had the f- like ASICs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not putting the feet on, mate. No, he had the feet on. He had the feet okay, on. Okay, yeah. uh-huh. He had the feet on, and he was holding like a mask, which had like the laser dots coming out of it. So presumably, if you if you asked, like he would put the mask on, or you could wear the mask. So he had the actual. You saw his face, face. Yeah, he had the he had the he had the Did they move? face. I can't remember. Mm. I was only there for a second because basically people were going in and doing the heroic poses or whatever. I did the one with the the, the back foot up, like the tee hee hee. It was very good. I'm in love, uh, and then I have a second photo which I didn't put up, which is. The, the dude in the suit looking very perturbed that I'm doing that pose, <laughs> which I didn't put up because I looked fat in it. Uh, <laughs> Give it to me. I'll shave it down. Okay, right? terrific. I'm, I'm good, good on good that. Stuff. Um, uh, and then I saw The Predator. Yeah, good. Excellent. Mm. So I just went to a, a, a cinema, like a local-ish, oh, not local-local, but one of the cinemas nearish me. And uh, I got there on time when the movie starts because you do. And uh-huh. I, you know, it's got, oh, is this a fire alarm story? It's not a fire alarm story. It's not even a good story. But this is <laughs> we'll just, be the judge of that. This is indicative of our hundreds of thousands <laughs> of listeners will be the judge of that. Everyone, email in and tweet and let James know. This is the action item this week. Let James know after you hear this story immediately. Tweet in to James. Was this a good story or not? At Mister Sunday Movies. Yes or no? Hit me up. Mm-hmm. Hit me up. So basically, I go to my seat. It's it's everything's um. What is it? Pre-arranged seating, whatever. Oh, Sign seating, yeah. Uh-huh. Which I like now. I was against it, but now oh. I'm for it. Wow. I go You're there. Mellowed. There's like a six-year-old dude in my seat. It's a it's a pretty empty theater, but I don't want to sit somewhere else and then be like someone else comes up to me and says, "Excuse like, me, you're, you're in, in my, my seat. seat." So I'm like, "Hey, uh, I'm in E9 or whatever," and he's like, "Oh no, I'm in E9," and I'm like, "Look, this is my ticket," and he's like, "Oh, I'm E5 or whatever," and he goes, "Do you want me to move?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I guess <laughs> not, man." So I'll just take your seat. All right. Uh-huh. So I go and sit in his seat. Whatever. It's not a big deal. It's really not. <laughs> it's quite close. Yeah. But, Same uh, row. You love E. You love e, row E. And then if you she, ever go to the movies, see James, you'll be in row jam. E. That's my jam. Yeah. Uh, there's, and then, some, then a couple came and sat in between us. 
uh, with a giant bag of food, like insane, like in a huge paper bag. I thought you were going to say a couple came in and sat to either side of you. <laughs> and he's like, oh, yeah, that's my, that's my polyamorous couple. But that's my 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 two wives, and this was this was as the movie started, right? Yes. So the movie's starting. There's a giant bag of food sitting next to me, and then the woman sitting uh, to the other side of that. She starts rummaging through the bag like a fucking squirrel. Is it like a bin bag? Yeah, I, I think I think it was like a big crinkly paper bag. Oh right, okay. Just like just yeah, just like a squirrel on bin night, just going yeah, through for it, sure. just uh-huh. pulling out all this different stuff. Starts, you know, it's all crinkly and loud. I'm like, uh-huh. I'm gonna have to move. I think. This the she's, movie. She's individually foiled, wrapped her bags of potato <laughs> chips. So she's like unfoiled them and then opened them, cracked them open. Yep. Uh-huh. And then this the movie has started, by the way. And then she pulls out her phone and she's just looking at, like eye level, looking at it. So it's right. How many in people my are in the cinema? It's probably twenty, maybe thirty. Okay. Right. Is there anybody directly behind her? Yes. Okay, great. And I'll, I'll, I'm going to say something. I'm going to be Does like, she look like a woman who will start a fight with you? Yes. Okay. But I'm, I'm also, I look at those two and I'm like, I could probably win this <laughs> if I had to. Could you tell me specifically which cinema this is? No, okay. I don't want to tell you that. Tell me later. Tell you later. So I'm, I'm going to say something. I'm like, you know what? I'll just move. I'm, oh, I know what cinema it is. Yeah, yeah. So I'll, <laughs> I'll just move. And I look over to see what she's doing. She's just flicking through apps. Not even doing anything. <laughs> just scrolling through apps. Right. Like, at least be on like, something. He, so she's like, hmm, still have Facebook? Great. Still have Twitter? Terrific. Okay, great. Might use those later. Not today. Still have email? Good. Mm. <laughs> so, so I just I just got up the front. And also, as, I, as I'm uh, leaving, I see the guy who was in my seat. He also had to move. So I'm like, good. At least that fucking idiot <laughs> also had to move. So it wasn't just me. So that's the cinema these days. I think mm. the problem is as well, because I went at like two or three o'clock. I normally go early because there's no one there. Yeah, right. All the dead shits are asleep. <laughs> so there you go. Anyway, I'm glad cinema chains are folding. Everything should just be at home. Mm. I've got a big TV. I don't give a shit. Uh, yeah. I disagree. I want that. I still, I love a good cinema, ex- cinema experience and most mm. of them are. I just want to, it's, it's not a big deal, yeah. but it's just, just get your shit together. Yeah. You know, it's not hard. <laughs> just shut your mouth, sit in your seat. That's it. Yeah, right. That's all uh-huh. you have to do. Look, I was going to say that I, or, that I enjoy the big cinema experience, but I don't because I don't enjoy going there and I don't enjoy interacting with the rest of the public. All I enjoy is somebody gives me food. Yeah. So I guess you I should. You can come here. I'll give you food. Oh, thank you. What do you want? You want a toasty? Yeah, I'd love a toasty. Get your toasty, mate. It's no problem. A toasty. <laughs> Uh, but like, I, I guess what I what I think what I what my solution is is to order Uber Eats earlier. Yes, so I can start the movie and then, and then it the, arrives. The food, food arrives. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When the cinemas, when it when it's good, it's great. Yes, agreed. but often it's just that. Now, do you think this affected your enjoyment of the movie The Predator? Before we get into that, Mason, I'd love to know what you thought the story was. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> what is it? All right, hang on. So. It's the Predator universe. It's the Predator universe. <laughs> so this is... What's canon? All of it, apparently. All appara- well, apparently, all of it's canon. Predator 1 and 2 are both canon. Yeah. That, that six-month period where nine, in 1997 where Los Angeles was a drug and gun-riddled war zone. Imagine the cinemas. <sighs> Oof. Hot. Anarchy. Hot, hot. in there. Yeah, hot, anarchy. certainly. Yeah. Just, just filled with dreadlocked gang members <laughs> machine-gunning each other. That's, that's canon still. Uh, okay, so... So... Uh, Boyd Holbrook yes. is a sniper of some sort. Yeah. He sees the Predator. Straight up. Straight up, he sees the Predator. And then he's like, hey, everybody, I've I seen the Predator. And they're like, we don't want you to be telling people you've seen the Predator. Don't tell people you've seen the Predator. So we're going to... You shut your mouth. We're going to lock you up in the crazy house. Yeah. Then he's got to get out of the pr- crazy house because the Predators are coming back. And maybe there's a different Predator. Yeah. Also, it's in the trailers. Yep. Uh, <laughs> ask me what I thought of it. What did you think of it, James? I thought it was pretty good. Did you? No, it was fucking terrible. <laughs> it was a really it. bad movie. I knew it. It was really bad. Yeah, it was like, bad. Like, it started off okay. Yep. And then it was horrible. Yeah. It blew my mind how bad it was. <laughs> it really threw me. Yeah, right? What the fuck? What did you think? <laughs> yeah, I thought it was pretty bad also. <laughs> but I, but okay it's taken moment. me, because I saw it, when did, I, when did it come out? Wednesday, Wednesday or something. It's taken me a couple of days to, to think, to go, is it a bad movie or was it just a fine movie? Like it was, it, yeah. it confused me. And I think it depends on which story you follow. <laughs> yes. in the, because everybody in this movie 
is acting in a different movie. <laughs> yeah. Because Olivia Munn, who plays like the 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 bio, she's quite good. She's good, but she's playing at a hundred percent straight, pretty yeah. much. She she, I believe, has probably seen Predator and Predators, mm. and has gone well. Predators was quite straight down the line, yeah. solid, serious action movie. I'll play it like that. And everybody else is like... I had, had, had only seen Predator 2. And only seen Predator 2, exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think... I, I mean, it's a Shane Black film. Would Neither of us like Iron Man 3. Nice Guys is good. Nice Guys is great. A lot of his stuff is really great. The dialogue does not work in this universe no. at all. I think I said this on our Predator episode. I think the reason Predator works with his dialogue is because it's a standard... No, it's not standard. It's, it's a really good action movie with the occasional Shane Black clip. This the action isn't particularly interesting in this. No, and it's just dialogue that just keeps going. There's, there's and one going. good action sequence which I think we'll get to later. Okay, but the rest of it, I'm like, it's just people firing machine guns ineffectually at things. Yeah, until they are suddenly effectual. Yes, that's every scene in this movie. And there's a lot of the predator killing people, but also. Can you name one? Like, can you name an interesting thing the Predator does? Not really. There's a scene where he shoots out a big grappling hook. Oh, yeah, through some. But that's leg in the trailer. It is in the trailer. So Also, I guess we can spoil this because it's in the trailer. There, There is a second Predator, which yes. is 11 feet tall, uh-huh. which I think is too big to be... <laughs> like, I don't see why it needs to be 11 feet tall. Yeah. It's... So it kind of ragdolls the original Predator at one yeah. point, which is also in the trailers. And a lot of the movie is then this new Predator, and it's just not very interesting. It's really not. The design's not good, particularly. And also, again, it's people machine gunning an in, a, a more or less invisible monster mm. from a long way away. So it may, be, may as well be the size of the regular Predator. Yeah. What difference does it make? And it's also mostly bulletproof, like you mentioned. Except when it's not bulletproof. Except when it's not bulletproof. Uh, they also, a lot of stuff seems to have been borrowed from Predators. When people say there haven't been a good Predator sequel, Predators is good. It is good. It's way better than this. Yeah. Like, so much better. Yeah. And a lot of the elements from that carry over. The Predogs carry over. Yep. I mean, it's slightly different, but uh-huh. the Predogs and the idea of Predators, there'd been different types and classes of Predators. Yeah. And some are bigger. Some are 11 feet tall or whatever. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Which, okay, yeah. right, whatever. Also, the new Predator seems to be mostly CGI and it's noticeable in a lot of parts. Uh-huh. Did you find that? Yeah. How do you feel about, if we can talk about the incredible characters of this movie, <laughs> how did you feel about Boyd Holbrook as a leading man, as a hero, as a family man, as a military man? I thought he was okay, yeah. but I don't think that's enough. I don't think he was compelling movies. or memorable. Yep. I don't... Buy him as someone who cares about his kid. <laughs> uh, sure. I don't. He did. He doesn't. I don't buy him as a guy who could feasibly take on the predator. Yeah, right. In any way, like even Adrian Brody. I'm like he transformed. He's fast. Yeah, you know, as we as we figured he's out. He's very in that muscular. Movie. Yeah, right. He's slippery as all hell. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Boyd Holbrook mostly seems like a guy, and I don't mind him. I thought he was good in Logan. And he's okay in this. Yeah. But he's just... And I also, know. I don't care if he lives or dies. No, this character. absolutely yeah. not. I think it could have been an Olivia Munn movie or Boyd Holbrook died and they give it to the guy from Key and Peele. And that would have been also <laughs> yeah. fine for me. Uh-huh. It's Key. Okay, good. <laughs> so there's a bunch of other uh, PTSD dudes that he that he finds along yeah. the way. And they're... And they f- definitively answer the question, is having Tourette syndrome still funny? <sighs> <laughs> Sorry, why, do you think, why do you think Thomas Jane took that role? What a, what a, what? Okay, they need to stop doing the Tourette's thing. They yeah. really need to stop. And I know there are some forms of Tourette's that are that. Yeah. But it's just not anything anymore. Yeah. You need, it's just someone going like, ah, cocksucker. And everyone goes, oh, he's, he's just got Tourette's. Stuff. And then some people are like, what did you say to me? Yeah. He's just got Tourette's. Stuff. Stop. Yeah. Stop doing that. The yeah. other thing is, Autism is not a fucking superpower, which right. is what they do in every movie with a kid with autism. Yeah. So this, this the the Boyd, Boyd Holbrook's son can do all sorts of predator decoding the language that the government can't, can't do or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's in like Sherlock. I saw a show on, an ad on TV for Freddie Highmore's playing a doctor who's who's got autism and uh-huh. maybe he's the best doctor in the world now or whatever. Uh-huh. I just, I, I, it just annoys me because as, as someone who's taught kids with autism, also it's a spectrum. It's not like... 
you're completely useless as a human being except you can do math. Yeah. Like, there, there, it's a whole range. Right. A lot of people have it. You don't even know. Exactly. I just think it's... Stop. We've probably both got a touch <laughs> yeah, of it, if right. I'm quite honest. I've wondered myself. I just and I, I, I just didn't think it was a good representation of mental health in general. And I'm not an expert on that, but just people slapping their heads and screaming. Yeah, yeah, wow. yeah. And also, as a side note... The Predator's operating system is overly complicated, if you ask me. There's so many levels to it. There is and there's so many d- dots and 3D things <laughs> flying about. doesn't need to be. I would have thought that as an advanced alien species, their their operating system would be more like an iPhone. Well, it was Pretty on the simple. first Just one. It's, it's like five buttons five on, a, buttons, on your wrist exactly, or whatever. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. What do you think of the, the quippy dialogue in this? Because they really lean into it. I'll tell you what. And I don't know what this means. It's not all bad. Because I went to the media screening. Yeah. And when we go to media screens, generally the people... Generally the Predator's there. Generally Generally the Predator's there, right? But And and he was here there this time, so Mm. I'll tell you you that for free, I'll tell you what. (laughs) But I would say generally the audiences do not react to anything. Yeah, right. Like they don't laugh, they don't smile, they don't cheer or clap or anything. It reminds... Yeah, especially when we saw uh, the Pirates movie. (laughs) Which we talked about the last time when we saw it. Just... Just dead, dead oh, silence in between jokes. Incredible. But I'll tell you what, people loved the stuff. People, I think maybe there were a lot of, I think some fans had won okay. some, some tickets to be there as well. Right. Um, and uh, people were loving it. But if you're there's a fan a, a of this, it, yeah. surely this is not a good version of the thing you I like. No, there's a look, a, look, spoiler alert. Somebody at one point in the movie says, get to the choppers and people <laughs> lost their mind. Let's see. Because it's a reference to the first movie. Yeah, it's not... It's not enough. It's really not, no. But also, this, this movie tries to do so many things. Mm. It tries to introduce too many characters and there's too many... They're too... I, I know they're supposed they're supposed to be crazy or whatever, uh-huh. but none of it makes sense. Their interactions don't make sense. How they do want to fight the Predator one minute and then they don't. They're scared, but they're not. Yep. They're in pain. I just... I don't... I don't... I, I couldn't get a sense of what... What was I supposed to feel with any of these? Am I supposed to like them? They're supposed to, well, and they're, they're supposed to be like each one's an individual crazy character, like the first one. I but guess. they're all, they have a tick, but they're all very generic. Yeah, like what's their? I mean, they of, look different. They're all what, different yeah. actors, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they are different actors. It's but true. But this is something that Predators again did did better. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hmm. One of them smokes. One of them smokes. Yeah. Maybe two of them smoke. Maybe two of them smoke. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bad and that, habit. And that's good, mm-hmm. I feel. Yes. Oh, okay, there were elements of this that I quite liked. Uh-huh. I'm sure there was some stuff that I did like. Yeah. I think, you know what the problem is? I thought it started really well. I liked the opening action sequence. I, I, it was tense enough. It's not my favorite action sequence. I said they were bad in general. But I thought the you see the, pretty much the Predator straight up. Uh-huh. And it's, it's, it's pretty good and interesting. And then it progressively gets worse and worse until the final scene, which just is mind-blowingly terrible. <laughs> Would you agree with... <laughs> I don't... I think I think the opening sequence was actually quite confusing. In what sense? I don't know. It was just... I mean, I was looking at a woman looking at apps on her phone. That's so true, what, yeah. What, what am I to well, say? Because we sort of open on the Boyd Holbrook's last mission before he is... You know, when when he sees the Predator and then then he, before he tells everybody about it and everybody thinks he's crazy or whatever, mm. he was like, it killed my whole crew. And I'm like, isn't there like, there's, there's like, like two, two guys there with him, two wasn't guys. There? Yeah. there was maybe one or two guys. Is that your whole crew? I'm like, did I miss the Were first? There, was there more crew? Did I, I'm, I spent the whole movie going, because he keeps going, they killed my whole crew. And I'm like, did... Did, I, did they cut out the first five minutes? Did they accidentally start? They did do a lot of reshoots on this, apparently. Right, okay. Or some reshoots, at least. Huh, yeah. okay. Also, who cares? We don't know them. Or also, you. Also, here's <laughs> the thing. Here's the thing. Right, he, he tries to keep out of the government's way, and he's like, I've got to get some evidence that this is, you know, the, the, this is happening. And then, all of a sudden, he's captured by the, 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 the government. government. Who are you telling? Yeah. They don't tell anybody. Because he's like, I don't want to be caught with some predator whatever's. Yeah. This evidence of the predator. He's in South America or whatever. Mm. And then he travels to America and he make, he makes great pains to not be caught with any predator evidence on him. Yes. But then he gets to America and they immediately lock him up. And he says, I did see an alien. So... He tells them. What did he do in between? Like, did he tell people on the plane trip? I don't know. Is he like, listen... 
There's no way for me to prove this because I left all the evidence somewhere else, but I saw an alien. I was unclear. I thought maybe was he going to sell the stuff or I don't know what he was right. sp- supposed to do with it. The other thing is he allows himself to be captured by the government. And this, I guess, is a spoiler because at the start. But he has a device on him which turns him invisible and he doesn't use it. Yeah. To just not get captured. Right. I just think that's strange. <laughs> well, you know? maybe, it, maybe it was, you know, still working its way through him. No, before that. Oh, yeah, before that, yeah. Before he, like, he didn't have, so he swallows it. Yeah. This is very early. That's a really good point. He could have just left. He could have just walked onto a plane. <laughs> yes. Like, he could have just walked around airport security <laughs> and stepped on the next plane to America. Yep. With all the predator evidence on him. Yes. Because it also turns invisible. <laughs> That's a really good point, James. It had never even occurred to me. So, look, it's just good to be here. But basically... <laughs> Just, he could have just turned. He could have just put all the predator stuff in his pockets. Yep. And then he could have turned invisible, and no one's expecting an invisible man, so yep. they would have just let him go. He could have got on a boat. He could have gotten on a bus. Yep. He could have got on a plane. Yep. He could have walked to America. He could have also got on a plane and then just gone not invisible and taken a spare seat. Yeah. And I doubt anybody would have noticed. Yeah. Right. I don't, I don't. He could have put a hat over his face and a newspaper and pretended to be asleep. That's right. Mm -hmm. All of these things. And if anybody was like, excuse me, sir, can I see your ticket? He could have turned invisible again. And broken their neck. That's right. Yeah. Because he's a killer. He's a remorseless killer. He is. Uh, Can we just do spoilers? Yeah, this is the worst movie ever. It's really bad. Mm -hmm. Uh, Also, maybe see it. (laughs) (laughs) Don't pay for it. Mm. Well, here's the thing. Okay, so look, I'm going to go to a a, a deeper cut of our review system. Uh Uh... Number one, don't pay to see it. If you can get it for free, if you can uh, win it as uh, as a number of people did. Somebody said hi. It was I believe his name was Mark. If you've got whatever's left of Movie Pass, yeah, whatever that is, get that. that. Uh, yeah, that he, yeah. he, he, listener of the show, he won a ticket through IGN. Oh, I think. very good. good for him. Uh, he got his money's worth. Uh, yeah, don't pay to see it. If you can get it for free, get your dad to pay for it. Get your dad to pay for it. Yeah. exactly. I nearly took my dad, uh-huh. and he's like, "Should I see this?" And I'm like, in all good conscience, you know, no, you're probably father. not. No. Yeah, no, I can't. I'm not going to do it too. But okay, the, the, my, I'm so my, glad I didn't take my, it. Yeah, because the last movie I took him to was The Mummy, <laughs> so oh, no, I would have been right. two yeah. for two. Yeah. He would have been like, at least in the same universe. Yeah, are you doing this on purpose? <laughs> do you hate me? So if I woke up in the cinema and this was playing, would I stick around? And how long would I stick around? I mean, I would stick around because it's the Predator. There's some oh, fascinating I've seen it before, things. though. This oh, is, this no. Is, yeah. I, I definitely would you leave not. immediately or would, would you stick around for a little bit? I would probably... Oh, no. Okay, spoilers? Yeah, spoilers. Worst movie ever. Yep. Go. So I would stick around probably until the sequence where the Predator, the original Predator, escapes from the facility. That's a good sequence. Because I think that sequence. is a solid action sequence. Agreed. And I think the movie just turns to crap after that. What I like about that particular action sequence, it's not in the dark, it's not in the jungle or the city. He's just in like a white facility. Ripping through people, exactly, and and I think I think that's a I'm I'm I imagine that that was put in deliberately to show okay, well even if you take away the predator's lasers and the and the knives and the swords and the discs and whatever, he's still a formidable force and he can take down a team of. But I mean, at the same time, they are mostly unarmed scientists. Yes, so, well, that's true. You know, uh, Gary Busey's son's in it as Gary Busey's son from Predator Two. Yeah, right. To no end. He's not. He's in it, and we. I don't think you see him killed. No, he's alive, and then he tells Olivia Munn to kill the predator. Yeah, and not then he's, really her position. Not really at all. And, and then he's just gone. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I mean, and I don't think he's at the end either. No, he's in it though, isn't he? He's definitely in it. He's also got no character traits of his father. He doesn't reference his father. I don't know what the point of him. Ha- I mean, I guess it's a nice little cameo. It's so we can point and go, ah, because yeah, I think some people in the people went, say that. Ah, okay, yeah, great, yeah. good. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen that dude since the Frighteners, and I like him. Uh-huh. Be more stuff, Gary Busey's son, yeah. Jake Busey Jake is your Busey, name probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you're also in Starship Troopers. Oh. Okay, let's talk about how the Predator. This is an element that I liked. The, the original one is a human hybrid. It's got human DNA because yeah, right. they augment themselves with the best hunters on Earth, mm-hmm. which also I think would add an interesting wrinkle to the law because he looks a lot like the original Arnold Predator. Schwarzenegger. Oh. Yes. Well, I, well that could have been part of <laughs> Who it. Who is definitely. his dad? There's some Dutch in him, maybe. Yeah. But, uh, but they didn't get Dutch, did they? No. Because that's why they collect the spines for the spinal fluid. Yeah, right, right. So, and he comes to Earth for the reason to give a, uh, a weapon that would... But we def- never know what happens to Dutch. We'll, we'll get to that. Oh, really? Will we? No, I, I oh. want to talk about the lack of use of him. Okay, right, right. But 
he comes to Earth to get. Oh, we'll talk about what he brings, but it's a gift because the human race is basically got, basically going to go extinct because they're ruining the planet. They're heating it up, and so the topical, pred- the pred- topical, very good. The predators are going to roll in and take over, and that's why their trips are more frequent to Earth. I quite like that, and I like the idea that, and they don't overtly go out of go to the way go out of their way to say it that. Because he's part human, maybe he's got that empathy in him, and that's why he's helping. Yeah, right. Because all the other ones don't seem to give a shit, except Uh for him. And I thought that was an interesting little wrinkle Uh on the Predator law. But do you think... How do you feel about them changing the Predator law in this way? Because up until this point, we're like, okay, well, they steal... They take people's heads because it's a trophy yeah. in the spines, but now it's a DNA harvesting thing. It's like, I don't mind it. Okay. I don't think they changed a lot. Yeah. They just did a lot of the same stuff, except yeah. for the giant predator, I guess. I like to, th- if, I, if I'm going to justify it, mm. I, would, I like to think that the initial predatoring yeah. was just to take the trophies. Yes. And then they figure out that there's some DNA sure. in Sure. You know? I'd agree with so that. So that could work. Yeah. And I also like the idea that different predators have different abilities based on what they've kind of done to themselves and they pick the best hunters in the world or whatever. But there's also a bit where they steal, uh, because the best hunter that the new predator comes across is the kid right. with autism. So he puts him on his ship to take him back to Predator World. When why, you didn't, just, why didn't you kill him? Just cut his head off, exactly. If he's the great hunter or whatever, just kill him. You yeah. kill everybody else. What do you care? Yeah. I just thought that was really strange. That's in the, that's exactly. It's one of those. It's one of those. It's like a, a you know a, a storyline about a character who never kills anybody, except the one time he does kill somebody. It's not. It's a. It's a broom with a mop on it. <laughs> not a, it's a. It's a broom with a bucket on it or whatever with a face. No, it's a broom mop hybrid. <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. But you know, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Where it's like, you know, they've got a they've got a rule against killing, and they break their rule there one time, and then it turns out it's, it's it's not a. You know, you know what I'm talking about. I know what you mean. Yeah. But so also, I don't think a predator with severe Hollywood movie autism is a benefit to a predator. No. Loud noises and everything. I mean, maybe yeah, they right. don't take that aspect of it. When they hybridize themselves, does it happen instantly? Or is it the next generation of predators that gets I, it? I think, well, that you see a little bit of the classic predator and they're doing it to him. So right. I just assume that it's an instant kind right, of thing. Right, okay, sure. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. That kid hmm. kills someone and doesn't care. Oh, with the mask, yeah. the predator mask. Right. I mean, he doesn't do it on purpose. Yeah, but uh-huh. afterwards, he's completely unfazed, and he even threatens some bullies with uh-huh. it. I thought that was very strange for that character. I didn't get a sense of he seemed mostly fine a lot of the time <laughs> until they wanted him to like slap his head or do math. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. I'm not sure what they were uh-huh. even going for with that. Well, so as soon as I saw that mask in operation, I'm like, that's a very that's a that that foreshadowing that it was so heavy handed. Right. Like obviously that's going to come into place in the final battle sequence, and obviously it does. Yeah. When it's like it only operates when it's being attacked, and then it re- retaliates. That, that, that's never been used before, <laughs> and this is the first time it's been put in a movie. And of course, it's going to come back. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't care for how heavy handed a lot of that stuff was. Those masks are big, aren't they? They really are you, quite large. You forget how big they are. <laughs> Uh, also, they're really protective of the main characters, and then so they can have as much dialogue as they can, and then they just kill them all in like five minutes at the end, <laughs> which is whatever. I didn't, but I didn't care. They got their. I mean, they were gory and gruesome, which there were some decent kills in this. There's a bit where a shield on a ship takes off a guy's legs and he slides off. Or oh, whatever, the force field thing. Yeah, okay, fun, right. Yeah, but uh-huh. I, I don't really remember much of of that. <laughs> There's a bit where uh, Key and or Peel and Thomas Jane shoot each other because they're best friends. Uh-huh. Okay. Or a couple. I think maybe they were a couple. Were they a couple, were I think they? they were a couple, yeah. Okay. I, did, I, I didn't get a sense of what that relationship <laughs> was supposed to be at all. Okay, so right. that's uh-huh. very yeah. possible. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, also, the bit at the end where they get on the Predator ship to stop it from taking off is just like the end of that last Alien movie where they're on a big balancing spaceship <laughs> as it's taking off. Oh, yeah. Do you remember? Right. Not and they're really. hanging off no, it. No, not really. Other. Uh-huh. Don't even worry about it. But then at the end, the Predator is still bulletproof, but then he's not bulletproof. And I noticed that. The he wasn't bulletproof. He wasn't bulletproof. They yeah. totally Anakin Skywalker him. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Lose all his limbs and he's just lying there. It's weird because just before it, Boyd Holbrook shoots him, he's like, what is that character's name? doesn't matter. No. He no. goes, what the hell are you? Which is what? It's a line from the first one. He's an alien. You've done this in time. You know exactly what he is. You, you know the species. You know what they're capable of. You know where they're from. You know there's more than one. You have all his weapons. What are you fucking talking about? Yeah, right. Why do you, Why would you say that? Because it's in the first one. <laughs> it's, 
He may as well just yell something at just any line from the he first movie. He should have said, Arnold Schwarzenegger! <laughs> <laughs> Van Damme was in the original Predator suit! Oh, yeah, God. we know that. Yeah. 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 Oh. So that was dumb. Uh, there's also a bit where Olivia Munn is testing the, the blood of a Predator or whatever, and they're in the RV, and she's just got a microscope. <laughs> Where'd that come from? You didn't have it on you. I didn't see you carrying it yeah. at any point. Yep. Was it on the RV? I don't know what's happening. Maybe they took it out of the school. Okay, fine. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Wouldn't work. I mean, no school ha- no, no school has that kind of funding. It wasn't <laughs> like a fancy fucking prep school, was it? No, it was a regular school. Yeah. Just standard school. Mm-hmm. Uh, there'd be one. There'd be one microscope, and it'd be locked up. Or the science teacher takes it home with them because they paid for it. <laughs> That's right. And they don't and want anybody day, to steal it. A bully breaks it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe. Okay, so there's a bit there's... on another kid's head. <laughs> also, there's like the stereotypical like mean bullies. Yeah. Who are like, oh, this, you dumb kid. Why are you so dumb? Ugh. Yeah. Yep. That's good, isn't it? No, it's bad. Uh, there's so the pro dogs. Yes. I didn't like them in Predators. I think it's one of the weaker parts. I think uh-huh. they're worse in this. Yeah, right. So they're much bigger. They're different dogs, it would yep. seem. Uh, one of them is killed by exploding from the inside. The other one gets like a cattle gun killer thing to the head. Or yeah. is it a gun that he shoots it with? I think it's a cattle prod. Prod- uh, cattle, cattle gun, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, and then it's nice. I thought that was going to reflect the guy on the bus who shot himself. Remember the, the, yeah. the other guy who's like, yeah, my commander was an arsehole, so I shot him, whatever. And it was him. And uh-huh. and the, also I got the sense that maybe it changed his personality, which can also be a thing. There was a guy called, I think, Phineas Gage, who a crowbar shot through his head and changed yeah, yeah. his personality because it, you know, touched his brain. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, and I thought maybe they were going to have formed some kind of bond. But they did But didn't. there's no sense of that. That's interesting. Missed opportunity. Or not even, but just like, what is this? What is yeah. this supposed to be? Yeah, right. It's just a like it doesn't really attack anybody from there on out. It just kind of collects just things. Just wanders around. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't it do some saving at one point? It might it? have done some saving. I, I don't it, remember. I think it leaves a hand grenade behind or something at one point. But by accident? Yeah. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. I didn't, it, it, and that's the thing because it's a it's a lot of a lot of weird eighties coincidence stuff happens in it. Right, yeah. Like the dog just happens to leave a hand grenade behind. Yep. You know, I can't think of another option, but they're in there. What did you think of the actor who was all trying to kill everybody all the time and he worked for the government and then they teamed up at Oh, the I end? quite like him. Spencer. Me too. Spencer, what's his face? Sinclair Brown? What's his name? I don't know. I don't know. know. Uh-huh. Um, I don't... But again, he's in a different movie. Yeah, yeah. I thought he was... I, I liked his wit. I think it was quite good. Or like, he, he was from... It felt like he was from like an episode of Silicon Valley or something Sterling like that. Sterling K. Brown. Sterling K. Brown. There yeah. we go. I was close. You were. I got the last name and the first letter of the You got some name. things correct. So, yeah. I thought it was quite good, but again, I think he his his it felt like everybody was written by a different writer as well. Right, yeah. And some of them they were like, let's have an eighties action hero style. Let's have Thomas Jane be he's an action guy, but also he's got Tourette's because that'd be funny in the eighties. That would be funny. It'd be hilarious in the eighties. But then we've got Sinclair Brown, who's a di- you know who's like a modern. A modern, family, yeah, like a modern family, <laughs> like an episode of Modern Family. Yeah, yeah I quite like. That character, and even the, the the bit where they talk about why they named it the Predator. And uh-huh. I'm like, well, it's really more of a sports hunter. And he's like, yeah, but that's not very cool. Again, in the trailer. Yeah, in the trailer. But then there's a, it go, there is a kind of a payoff to that scene later where Olivia Munn tells the group, and they're like, it's not, that's not really a Predator. It's more She's of a... She's like, I sold you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. I, that I, that's there, what I said, yeah. There's flashes of it that I quite like, yeah. but a lot of it is just Shane Black spinning its wheel. It's bullshit dialogue. And I like his dialogue a lot, but it does not fit. It in doesn't this work in this at all. It, yeah, I don't know. I th- is it that he? Would you trust him with another? He shouldn't do movies like this. He yeah. should do his own movies. Yeah, independent of any franchise. That's what I'm thinking. He yeah. should because the nice guys works. That's a good movie. I agree. And it's because he's working with his strengths, but clearly that isn't sci-fi action superhero. Yeah, I don't think he can do any of that. I don't no. know what. I don't know what. He seems to not have an under... Like, same with Iron Man. This is way worse than Iron Man 3, by the way. Yeah, it probably is, yeah. He doesn't seem to have a <laughs> firm understanding or not care about the universe and what makes those particular movies good. Yeah. Does that he make doesn't, sense? I think maybe there's some... 
It's I again, really thought this was going to be good. <laughs> I thought, oh, I didn't know if I thought I mean, it was not like, I heard the reviews weren't good, but yeah, like right. prior to that, I'm like, this could really be good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Great, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, and some people are liking it, so. Yeah, they're wrong. Yeah, they're wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I think that there's, a, there's certain internal consistencies to these universes and certain rules that do have to be followed in them. In order for the the the, the idea of, ideas of it not to collapse, yeah, and they don't work. Like again, we talk about in Iron Man three, Tony Stark's a character who's supposed to be learning. From, you know, he's a guy who spent multiple movies learning from all his mistakes, mm. and then in Iron Man three, he just keeps grappling with these dudes who can melt his suits to nothing. Yes, he does it like five times in a row. He's also got a hundred suits in a basement that he can access at any point and in never time uses them until and it's he like, does. Well, and again, and it's exactly like the thing you pointed out earlier. If you're a man who can turn invisible, what are you doing putting some alien equipment in a box and shipping it through like with FedEx where they'll probably x-ray it at customs? Of course they're going to x-ray it. When you can just turn invisible and get on any plane. <laughs> oh, there's a plane to where I... Where do I live? Midwest or something? I'll get on that plane. Know. Exactly. Yeah. doesn't matter. Like nobody's going to check. Just to hide in the toilets. Yep. Go into first class where there'll be an empty seat. Mm-hmm. Just sitting there. Drink a know? champagne. Drink a champagne. Don't spill on yourself. No. Because then the, the electricity will <laughs> yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, that's the thing. Like, It's almost like they went... It's almost like he writes... The, did he write this? Or is this... Yes. Okay. Well, then it's almost like he writes these things... I'll double with, check that. Okay. Yeah. It, it's all... Well, I mean, I guess direct. You know, the director ultimately determines where the narrative goes. Probably. I don't know. So, yeah. <laughs> we don't actually know. But, like, it's almost like he writes the movie just to be a certain way and then when somebody says hey but wouldn't wouldn't the character just do this he's just like nah fred decker as well okay but right yeah. mm. but it's just like nah we'll just say he doesn't <laughs> well then it's not movie... a good enough movie where you can let shit like that slide no i agree yeah. in movies like predator the yeah. original predator there are flaws and of course there are yeah, but yeah. it's it's just such a compelling movie and you like the characters yeah. enough that you've, exactly. There's, there's so much to forgive. And it, yeah, and again, like you know, hey, why wouldn't why wouldn't Iron Man just be a mile away and shoot that guy with a repulsor blast? Yeah, because he has no range weapons. Uh, let's just say he doesn't. <laughs> why not? <laughs> then it's it's almost like they were like, well, I've done the scene where he fights the guy, uh, and I'm not rewriting it. Yeah. Well, you should. Yeah. You should. You should. You yeah, should. But they, yeah, they, they didn't. They didn't. Don't. Why would they? Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about the ending. Okay. So basically, I was really excited to see what the predator had brought to Earth. I'd forgotten about that. Yeah, because I was like <laughs> this. Because I think if they had nailed that last scene, I would have yeah. come out of this way different. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's why it came out of Justice League. All right, because at the end, well, we both liked it. But yeah, at yeah. the end, Superman turns up. Oh and wait, he's... no, I didn't. <laughs> Sorry. You, what you've done here is you've correctly predicted that we're at the point. Of the podcast where my energy's low and I'll just let a lot of stuff slide. But I will not let that slide. I did not enjoy Justice League. It's a bad movie. But when Superman turns up for me yeah. and he's Superman uh-huh. and then he has a running race with a flash, I went into that movie like, all right. Yeah, right. Okay. That's fine. Uh-huh. But this does the opposite. So yeah. basically, first of all, the kid also has amazing autism superpowers so yep. he can decode all the Predator stuff. Uh-huh. Immediately, yes, right, uh-huh. uh, and so he's in the room when they're going to open this predator device that's going to fight the predators, and the kid's just in the room. It's way too late till somebody goes get the kid out of the room while this thing is opening. Yeah, right. You don't know what it is. The audience doesn't know what it is. It could have been a bio weapon. Yep. It could have been a more insane predator. It could have been because what shape wise, it looked like the gauntlet that has the bomb in it. <laughs> it could have been a really big one of those that could have vaporized the whole continent. Because if we re- if you recall, the Predator Gauntlet thing can vaporize three hundred city blocks. That's right. So one that's a hundred times the size. I also felt the leap that they thought the Predator was coming to Earth to save them. Where did you get that from? Right. There is no clear evidence that that is what's happening here. Uh-huh. He killed about 20 scientists like that. Yeah, right. For no reason. <laughs> he, he, was he come Not for no reason, but uh-huh. if he's coming to Earth to protect people. Yep. I mean, I guess he's got a greater, higher calling. He just burns through them like they're nothing. Yeah, right. Why, why would you think that that's nothing but death? He could have brought a little sign that says, I come in peace. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Like, when he came to Earth, who was he going to give it to? Like, the president. <laughs> Don't give it to him. No. <laughs> but uh, so basically, what comes out of the sarcophagus thing is a 
a gauntlet? <laughs> it's a it's a gauntlet. But was there a bunch of gauntlets in there, or is that just one? I think one? it's just one. It's weird. I thought so. Because Maybe... there's a, a lot of space in that thing. But in the gauntlet, this is basically an Iron Man-esque nano suit that it's a metal predator exoskeleton. And you put on the gauntlet... And it envelops you. It's got it metal on, dreads. It's, it's got metal dreads <laughs> and just ridiculous. You, you it's know, a horrible design. You know what it, yeah, it, it's got these huge, g- giant, unbalanced cannons <laughs> on the side. You know what it reminded me of? If you've seen the movie The Mask, yes. at the end of the movie The Mask, <laughs> Stanley Ipkiss, played by Jim, the great Jim Carrey, yeah. finally reacquires his mask. The mask. He puts the mask back on and becomes the mask again. I've seen the And mask. because he's surrounded by gangsters, he comes out wearing a big pinstriped gangster suit like from the 20s yeah and then he pulls out two like ridiculous cartoon machine guns <laughs> yes and he you know threatens them with it that's what this was <laughs> just like boing look at these big old cannons boing looks so it looks stupid it looked really and because stupid. it was entirely cgi there's yes. no weight to it there's no it seemed like a late edition yeah right it seemed like a placeholder. Yes. I think they went, okay, well, the thing that he brings is a big, it's a big suit and you can wear the suit and you can become a predator. All right, that's fine, I guess. Well, we'll workshop it and if we think of something later, we'll put it in and they didn't think of anything better. Well, see, I thought it was going to be a person. Yeah. Or or some at least someone recognisable. Uh, a few people wrote in and I thought this as well. It could have been Adrian Brody coming back from the Predator game. Yes. Because, planet because he's the ultimate killer. Yeah, yeah. I understand why they didn't do that because nobody saw that movie. Yeah, there's no, nobody there's no would have name recognition. It. Yeah. How about this? Mm. It, can you imagine? See, that's the thing because it's it's a lot of this is a throwback to the first one. Yeah, we're we're ignoring the middle couple, I guess. Again, imagine if imagine if the sarcophagus opens and we see like a half a second, we see like just a Arnold Schwarzenegger's face, like one tiny little. Yep. Wouldn't that have blown people's minds? Yep. But he didn't want to do it. He didn't of want course. to do this movie. Yeah. Apparently there was a scene he was going to turn up at the end in a chopper and be like, I'm part of the government and we're all going to get yeah, rid of right, this right. now. And he was like, this is bad and I'm not going to do it. Fair enough. Good call, man. Yeah, yeah, good call. Well done. But but It could have been Dutch and they kidnapped him at some point. Yeah, right. And then they're returning him to be like, we've taught this guy everything he needs to know. Right, Here but that's is. the thing. I don't think you even have to go that far. I think all you need is the face recognition, yeah. and just for people to go, where was he? Why is yep. he back? Yep. You don't. You don't need. You don't need him to be a government agent. You don't need to him to have to have, you know, trained on the predator home planet or whatever. You just need the 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 huge swath of time has gone, and this guy's back. Why? Cut to cut to the end. You're right. The the that idea that the idea that. Actually, what he's brought is a suit, and you put it on, and then you're a predator. <laughs> is embarrassingly bad, and it and it it's one of the things where like the imagination of where it could go is way better than actually yeah. telling us. A it physical... was the worst thing it could have been. Yeah, it's because it, if you if you just bring it back Arnold Schwarzenegger, you go, okay, well, what is he? Is he a predator hybrid now? Is he a killer? Is this it, a clone? Is it a clone? Is he is is he? Evil or good? Does he have secret knowledge? Does he have? Does mm. he know anything? Is he a mindless drone? What is like? Until the next one comes out, we don't know. And then and they, they can decide what that is they, in they between. Can, exactly right. Yep. Maybe he's just a bomb or something. Maybe yeah. You know, maybe who knows? Maybe it's like a predator terminator hybrid or something. Maybe that's bad. But don't don't think of that. <laughs> I'm just spitballing. There's no ideas in there's no bad ideas in spitballing except for a predator suit <laughs> that you put it on and you're the predator now. Because the other thing is about a predator suit is. Every single predator that's come to Earth in the movies has been murdered. Yes. You don't need a predator suit to kill a predator. Right. Yeah. You need a brick. <laughs> that's all you need. Yeah, right? You need a brick and to get their mask off. You get, you get their mask off and then you run behind them a couple of times. <laughs> they get disoriented and then you hit them with something heavy. <laughs> that's, it. that's exactly it. I think what we have weapons. Yeah. Every every predator has been defeated. One was defeated by a log. One was defeated by Danny Glover. He had such big pants on. <laughs> he had such big pants. I mean, pants he had free, he got a lot of freedom of movement because they had space. big old pleats in those pants, you know. And also, it's one it was a zoot suit riot it's, over there in 1987. Like you said, it's one suit. I mean, I guess unless you reverse engineer it and you make an army, but that's not an interesting movie either. No. So so what is the next movie going to be if they make it, which they won't? Boyd Holbrook is in a, the dumbest looking thing you've ever seen and he just kills the millions of predators that are going to invade Earth. Just CGI, a million CGI <laughs> predators. Boring and dumb and bad. Um, yeah, it, it was it was absolutely shades of 
uh, Independence Day resurgence. Yes. Which, which the cl- the closing line of which is Brent Spiner going, "Yeah, let's go kick some alien ass." Yes. But that had me going. I'd see that movie. I probably would have seen that. Yeah. If the preceding two hours of that movie hadn't been terrible. <laughs> I don't you know, mind it. You know they're, just, they're both as good as each other. Those independent. Yeah, no, movies, you, but agreed, yeah, so yeah. Good, yeah. yeah that, no, that's all I got. It okay. was it was absolute shades of that, and I don't care because it's too specific. Mm. You know what? It would be good if. Do you think he just went Iron Man? Yeah, maybe. I did Iron Man, so I guess this. <laughs> you know what would be good if that happens, and then then the suck because there's room in that for something else. Yeah, I would be willing to like watch a an- man. That's what I'm saying. I would be willing to watch another one of these if the opening sequence of the next movie is they put the suit on and then something else comes out and kills that thing, and then it's a different movie. Just r- just write it out. I just want a sequel to Predators. Yeah, same. That's all. I don't want this. How about this? How about this? The opening sequence of the next one is. Boyd Holbrook puts on the Predator suit, Adrian Brody steps out and kills him. And then it's a different movie. Great. Yeah, good, right? And he's like, I don't know what that was, but it's going to be useless. <laughs> How about rely on hitting somebody with a, in the back of a head with a brick? Because that worked for me they're and not everybody ar- else. They're not armored on the back of their head. They really are not. Except for the really big ones that are bulletproof. Yeah. Until they're not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty shit. Got some opinions here. <laughs> yep. Uh, oh, also, a lot of people have mentioned this. This is probably going to win the Gamers On Award for the year. For sure. So for, anybody who, does, for anybody who doesn't know, every year we, we do our Weekly Planet Awards. They mean nothing. Nobody gets any trophies. Uh, but what They is, mean nothing to us or yep. anybody that listens. And but Except for this one, which is the, the award for when the game was on, which is an award where it's, it's the most ham-fisted attempt to uh, entice us into a sequel or a franchise. Yep. It's been won by Independence Day Resurgence. It's been won by The Mummy, the Tom Cruise The Mummy. And it's been and it was originated by the previous Dark Universe uh, entry yeah. uh, Dracula Untold. Yes. Which and is we, why it's called The Game is Odd. We talk about it a lot. We, we talk about it a lot. We mention yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, this is going to win it. <laughs> Cuz it's like you you're going to like another one except everybody's Iron Man. No, we're not. <laughs> we're not actually. The point of these movies is not that a man in an indestructible suit can just kill a thousand predators. It's that somebody who's woefully under underprepared, doesn't know what they're doing, fumbles their way through accidentally killing a predator yeah. after it kills everybody they know, and they barely do it. Yeah. And maybe sometimes they don't. Yeah. Whatever. It's a, it, they're horror movies. Yeah. They're horror movies where you experience incredible fear and you and you care about these characters to some degree and you want somebody to win that isn't the predator, and eventually maybe they do or they don't. That's what these movies are. I don't want to see just a guy. And exactly, I think I think some element of the fandom, or you know, you go, oh, wouldn't it be cool if humans had the plasma cannon and the knives and the whatever? Imagine taking the fight back to the predators. Imagine, but it's not interesting. No, I don't think anybody actually wants that as a movie. Mm. You put it in a spin-off comic, you know, give somebody they can wear a mask, they get the thermal vision. Put yep. it in a book, I don't know, but don't give us a movie of that. It's not interesting. <laughs> I, it's, I think it's fine to be like, he got some Predator gear and he has just the invisible thing. Yeah. Or whatever. But don't just be like, yeah, he's got all the weapons and... So a Predator knows what that is and could probably stop it. Right. It's predator tech. They can probably hack it. See, that's what I'm talking... Th- what I think would be... Because the Predators always have like remote control over their equipment and over their ship... And whatever. Well, maybe we'll have some... Adrian Brody gets out and it's like a like unlocking a car. Yeah. And he turns whoop, whoop. it off. Yeah, And good. then he kills the guy who was in it. Yeah. Nice. Okay. That's, mm. that's my that's... suit. Yeah. That's my suit, Mason. Remember that bit where he said, that's my suit? That much, that's my suit. That's what he's going to do. Just hang around in that suit till the Predator shows up. <laughs> till millions and of the Predator, predator should... here. I can't see anything in this suit. <laughs> but it's my suit. It's my suit. Okay, Ethan says, uh, well, I guess who's no, I guess who's, we know who's going to win uh, this year's The Gamers On Award. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Ninja Dude 3 says, my review of The Predator, bad CGI for dogs, wiener kid, awful acting, worst movie ever. Sexy Matt says, just watch The Predator. I found the tone off putting and all the characters were terrible people and needlessly cruel. Good gore, though. Worst movie ever. Uh, Matt Was Bev- the gore good? Sometimes. Yeah. The, the bit in the, the, sa- the scene we talked about in the facility. Yeah, okay, that was pretty good. Matt Bevan says, hey lads, saw the Predator, I have to say I loved it. Usually wouldn't, but I enjoyed Shane Black's Don't Worry About It campiness. You see the spear, 
Uh, Alien vs. Predator is canon, baby. I, I didn't know that. It was one of the spears from Alien vs. Predator in it. Oh, I see. Which I guess would mean... The famous spear. That's why everybody <laughs> in my show went, It's the spear! It's a spear from Alien vs. Predator, the first one! Yep. Did you not pick up on no, where people I yelled I that? No, I didn't understand what they were saying there. Yeah, no. I uh, so I guess that means that the Alien vs. Predator movies exist in the Predator universe, but they don't exist in the Alien universe. If it's oh. that spear. Yeah, right. Uh, also, I was so sure the Predator killer in the pod was going to be Adrian Brody. I wish it was. Me uh, too. Lord Commander Dan says, saw the Predator. I think it was just a movie. Don't regret seeing it at all. It would have been the best movie ever if the Predator killer turned out to be Royce from Predators. And old Greg says, what the fuck was the Predator? Looking back on <laughs> it, Predators was incredible. Correct, it was. Uh, this hurts to say because I love Shane Black and Predator movies. Even Alien vs. Predator 1. Didn't even feel like a Predator's movie. Also, it's the front runner for Gamers On mm-hmm. Award. Yes, it is. What movie did it feel like? You know what I mean? It's like they got the worst parts of the first one and the worst parts of the most recent one. Yep. And just mushed them in. That's why we liked it. That's why we loved it. <laughs> anyway, if you've got any thoughts on it, please let us know. Because mm. I'm... Yeah. Oh, also this week, Ethan Taylor, who's done some animations for us before, he's also done some stuff for Sans Pants. Oh, speaking of The Predator. He has animated a Kevin McAllister from Home Alone versus The Predator clip, yep. which will be up by now on my YouTube channel. I highly recommend you check it out. Super fun. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. I'll link that below as well. But uh, yeah. It's fun little new animated versions of ourselves. That's right. Yes. Mm-hmm. So get into that if you know what's good for you. Yes. Do you know what's time for though, Mason? Oh, it's for our, time for our famous segment, What We Reading? What We Gonna Read. I'm doing the theme. What are we reading today? <laughs> That's my favorite kind of movie to review. Because it's bad. Because it's bad. Or, you know, good or bad is good. In the middle, it's tough. Yeah, you're like, like, yeah, yeah it's this fine. was fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I love a bit of enthusiasm. That's, me all, too. that's all we want. That's all we want. We just want a bit of momentum. It can't be this every week. You know what I mean? I yes. love it to be, but that I think that wears thin. You know those. The, like there's YouTube channels that are just built around rage. Yeah, you can't. And you sustain can't it. sustain it, and it doesn't apply to everything. I, th- I think we mentioned it on the Q and A. This is this is one. Oh, of do we? Yeah, yeah, I think very very briefly. I went back to one of those ones that I'd enjoyed as a as a as a younger man. Mm. It's been going for a really long time, and it's basically here's a thing, and here's why I hate all the things about it. Yeah, and. I, I watched one. I'm like, oh, he's still doing those. Okay, and I watched it, and it's he's just phoning it in. Yeah, right. At this point, he doesn't. It's not not. But the, but other stuff on the channel where he's like, I like these things. Yeah. Like you can't hem yourself in by being yeah, like, absolutely. I hate this because you can't hate everything. You can't hate if everything. If you do, that's weird. We'd love to hate everything. Yeah. Believe me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ah, what I read. I yes. watched American Vandal season two. Uh huh. I didn't mean to watch it all at once, but I did. There you go. Yeah. It's great. Did you see the first season? Not yet. No. Definitely check it out. Okay. Cool. It's like those true crime. Did they do it? Yeah, like thing. a serial kind of situation. But it's yeah. it's it's like school pranks. Is it? So it's a different Vandal. It's this a different time. Different Vandal. Different, different school. It's different school. really good. It's, okay. Cool. That. It's just a really good series. Yeah. So 100% check it out. If I'm not a fan generally of true crime and... I'm not, and I really like okay, it. Okay, cool. Because a right. lot of time at the end of the true crime ones, especially a lot of podcasts, it's like, we, we don't know. But thanks for listening to 100 hours of this. <laughs> right. Surprise, you didn't know, we didn't know. <laughs> but we don't, because if you did know, that person would be in jail, yep. and this would be pointless. Uh, correct, yes. Yeah. Uh, so well worth checking out. I also bought the new Tomb Raider game, and it's like the other ones. Exactly the same? Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. Are there new mechanics? No. no. Does she has still have that? Uh... Yeah, she got two this time. And she's got a, like a grapple thing and okay, whatever. Right. It's okay. just, it's okay. Does she have the traditional Tomb Raider guns? You know, the Not two yet. Guns? Maybe I get them later. But I like the bow and arrow. Do you arrow. think she's ever going to get the traditional Tomb Raider guns? I don't know. They're very silly. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Um, what, what other questions do I have? At any point does she fight a dinosaur? I'm very early on in, but no. Okay. Uh, I think they should... I like the new series, yep. but I think it's now time to shift it in the way it used to be. Not in the bad... A lot of those are bad. <laughs> those games are bad, all right? They're bad. They're unplayable. Uh, but you can now introduce all those elements back in. Because the, cause I've I've only played the... I played the reboot. Yeah. Uh, whenever that came out many years ago. It's Terrifico. It is Terrifico. That's one of the elements that I... If we can talk about Spider-Man again briefly. Yeah. One of the, I've been thinking about it. One of the things that is missing, I think, from Spider-Man is a genuine danger... When you're web swinging, okay, like sure. because in that game you can fall a thousand feet, you can fall off the tallest building yes. in New York and not do anything, and you just sort of tip on the ground. And I guess the understanding is, well, he's a superhero, and and that's his. But skill that would set. still hurt Spider-Man. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like I think 
But there's a scene in the in the Tomb Raider reboot where you have to climb really high up to a communications yeah. tower and you look down. And when I played that bit, I felt the same way as I felt when I actually look over the side of a really tall building. I'm like, yeah. oh, I've got to get away from this. Yeah. And there's no element of that in Spider-Man. Like, it's fun. Yeah. And it's really fun to swing around all the buildings. But at no point am I like, there's some consequences if I just fell off the... I agree. I think maybe, I mean, you could say... They do it in two, actually. You, do they? You okay. Got, you got fall damage. Maybe if there's like a... Like an absolute ceiling. Like if you yes. go above like a thousand feet and you just drop, you yeah. die. And unless you do like a combat roll out of it or something. Yeah. That would work. There's also, I think in two, I think if you fall from a great height, you can just splat. Okay, right. And you can doesn't always kill you, I think. Yeah. Now, obviously I'm saying this now, but I'm sure if they actually implemented that in the game, I'd be like, what do I keep dying? I just <laughs> jump off buildings. Come on. But I got it. I'd end, I'd play it. I'd play it. And then I would end. When the game was finished, I'd have like low grade anxiety all the time. <laughs> I'd have dreams where I kept falling off buildings and dying. So I have those. I don't actually want that, but I think it'd be no, interesting I want that. to try it. I want you to. I want to have it. So it'd be you interesting. Like it, it's it's fun, but there's no sense of like, wow, this is I'm I'm really flying through this city kind yeah. of thing because there's no consequences to when you drop. Absolutely. But anyway, you know. But what are you reading? Uh, I watched the first two episodes of Iron Fist. And? It's a lot better than season one. Great to hear, yeah. I mean, maybe I've it takes a dive. No, I've but, heard good things. That's great. Um, yeah, look, the, the action sequences are... Have you got a What We Reading book? No, this is my this is my notebook that I have to write everything down in. Like, if I have to, like, buy milk, I have to write it down because I can't remember anything. You anymore. aren't artisanal nerd. You're drinking water out of... This is a moleskin a... as well. This I bet a, it is. Yeah. Oh, I got one of those I had right a f- here. I had a field notes, but I lost it at work, so... Do you know when I... We used to work, Mason, at a bookstore. I, there was a moleskin uh, book that I took because I'm like, one day I'm going to write something in this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and you I, stole it. Wow. I, I have it. All right. But let's just say that... I. But I've never thought... I've never written in it because I'm like... Because once I write in this... What if it's bad? <laughs> and, what if it's, and what if it's cursed because you stole it? And what if you write... Say you know, I stole it. Exactly. Nobody said what if I you stole write, it. What if you write, get milk, and then you walk out of the door and a milk truck just <laughs> careens in and crushes you to death. And you got that milk, my friend. You got all the milk in the world. Are you happy now? Is that all the milk in the world? No. Okay. It's some milk. What if it was a tidal wave of all the milk in the world? That's I go exactly. outside and I'm like, what? Oh no, we shouldn't have written in the cursed book. No. <laughs> exactly. You need to give. You need to pay that book forward. Okay. You need to give it to somebody. I don't want that. I want to keep it. All right, keep it then. Thanks. Uh, let me see. Okay. I, I just wrote... drop off like some money. <laughs> I guess you could pay for the book. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're not cheap, are they? First two episodes of Iron Fist. Yep. Which I enjoyed. He's not as whiny anymore. Great. Which is great. He's he's learned his lessons from. I think generally speaking, the Marvel. Uh, TV shows are on an uptick now. Okay. Like the 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 low point I think was Iron Fist season one, and I think after that they've all improved. I think a lot of people didn't give the Defenders a crack really. I didn't think it was very good. That's fair enough. Uh, I, I thought, thought it was fun. I thought Iron Fist was better than the oh, Defenders. Oh wow, yeah. interesting. Okay, well it does matter. No, it <laughs> it's in the past. That's right. But uh, look, and it's it's. It, it's he's he's learned his lessons. He's not as much of a whiner anymore, which mm-hmm. is good. Yep, yep, he's a yep. working man. Uh, his uh, Colleen is back, a character whom I liked. She's great. She's good. She's uh, back for the new Star Wars as well. His two childhood friends are back, Joy and what's his face Ward. Great. They're fine. Isn't one of them evil now? I don't know. Oh, yeah, maybe. Um, and. What I did enjoy about is it David is David Wenham back. David Wenham's not David back. Wenham. David Wenham does not return. David Wenham. Let me tell you a tale. Um, what I did enjoy about it is that they've clearly had some more time to work on the fight sequences, and he is he's approach. I don't know if this is maintained through the series, but from what I can tell, he is he he's it it it's much better at making it appear that he is what he is in the comic books, which is a guy who's so good at martial arts that most people are just wasting his time. Right. Okay. You know, he's there's a lot more of him just dropping people with one punch, ah. which is a lot better. Like just just write it like that because it's he's that good. Yeah. A guy with a knife in an alley shouldn't be anything. Shouldn't threaten him in any way. You know. Yeah. Good point, Mason. Mm. And that's why it's great. Yeah. Uh, so watch that. Who knows what the rest of it's like, but it yep. seems fun. Uh, and Bojack Horseman season five is out. So. You seen it yet? Not yet. I haven't finished the last season. Okay. It got to a point where I was like, this is such a show. <laughs> I don't think I can do this. Was it the part about Bojack's mother? Is that Yes. Where yeah, There's see a lot, a lot of, of people drop off there. I think, like, yeah. But I, I really like it, so I yeah. want to go back. Also, I heard that F, F is for Family is coming back this year, which I really like. Which one's that again? That's the Bill Burr one. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, All right, I've not watched out. any of that. I'm gonna write. I'm gonna write it down. I don't have a pen. It's got, and I won't give you one. It's God got. Um, 
I have no idea where the pen's in my well, house. Well, that's all right, because I wouldn't want to, because this is all blue ink, I wouldn't want to mess it up. That's in true. addition to not remember anything, a little bit OCD about this book. I understand. So, you know. Uh, there's shades of, because we, we were around in the 80s, but we don't really remember them, I guess. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. we were very small. Uh, and now we're just. <laughs> Our eyes were tiny. Our eyes were tiny. But there's shades of stuff that I remember from the 80s. Yes. That like, because this, the Everson family is on the tail end of like the 70s. Yeah. And there's that kind of, there's a weird kind of harshness and just a, Pressingness to that era that I find yeah, that right. I found like a like taxi like that like show taxi, taxi yeah and and it's I know I just, I just find it I think it's a good show mm. uh, anyway should we go to the next segment of yes, the show uh, hang on just let me try and let you me... never bring that book out ever now suddenly you're bloody yeah. you're drinking from a well, jar this is new you uh, gave me that jar to yeah drink I gave of. it to you because I knew you got this new book you dickhead <laughs> um. what I'm gonna try and rewatch is Snuffbox what's that it's the it's the Matt Berry show. Okay. It's the weird, it's more surreal because we I watched I rewatched Toast of London. Apparently they're doing another ago. season of that. Ooh, yeah. Good, good, good. I'd love to see. Ooh. Okay, snuff box. Yeah, cool. nice. Uh cool. Anyway, letters, I guess. Letters. The classic one was letters, oh letters. We love you. Some letters. They're only a day away. Hang on to here right now, we're gonna do letters. What up, dog? It's letters time. Oh yes. <laughs> uh listen. If you want to reach the show, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod on Twitter, you mm-hmm, can. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, Weekly Planet Pod at gmail.com. Shoot a Gmail over to Nicholas P. Mason. That's me. And he will tell you what's going on. Is that mm-hmm. your middle name? Yeah, it's P. It's P double E. Yeah. It's not three E's? No. Okay, good. No, it's, it's, it's the standard spelling of P. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Uh, you go first. Okay, sure. This is from Dion, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Hey guys, hope you're well. Love the show. Which deleted scenes do you wish made it into films? Mine is Kylo Ren on the Falcon from The Force Awakens. That's a good one. I yeah, agree. Okay, deleted scenes. What do you got, Mason? My go-to one is the bit, the only interesting bit in Superman Returns where he goes back to Krypton. Crystal Ship, yeah. It's a great movie, great. regardless. That's not true. I like it. Do you? Yeah, kind of. Hmm. I mean, I like it less now that a sex pest directed it. Yeah. So, yeah. Deleted scenes. Allegedly. Ah. Uh... Deleted scenes, but you know these directors, you know they got their reasons for, for deleting stuff. You know what I mean? Oh, I thought you meant for the, the other. No, thing no there's no said. excuse for that. No, <laughs> okay. it's we get that. Like, wow, that's a yeah, that's right? a bold stance to take. Yeah. <laughs> Do you not think people listen to the back end of this? <laughs> <laughs> they don't. People have tuned out. Uh, deleted scenes. What about all the stuff from Iron Man three? Said in China that they deleted. No, I'm fine with that. Is that actually deleted or is the, do the Chinese get it? I think it's the it? Chinese version. Okay, I, no, I don't know. What about the ending of I Am Legend, which is the better ending? Don't care about that movie at all. I think a lot of the times I find deleted scenes really interesting, but I'm like, yeah, that should be I completely be gone. understand why that's been taken out. Yeah, yeah, like I like that Kylo Ren scene, but I also understand why they took it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you know what? There's a scene in, I don't know if it's, is it in the director's cut? It probably is in Terminator 2 where... The chip in the head. The chip in the head. Yes, that's yeah. a great scene. That's it, because that was in the because when I saw Terminator Two originally, it was not in there, but it's in the comic book adaptation. Because ah, remember back in the day yeah, yeah. when comic books, when comic books and novelizations of movies were always based on the original script. Yes, and so they would always have scenes that were taken out. Yes, yes. So there's a scene in Terminator Two where it's revealed that the learning chip in Arnold Schwarzenegger's head is set to read only, so yeah. they have to cut his head open I like that and, a lot. Set and change the, the, the switch so he can learn, like he can actually take on knowledge and become a, a you know a, a real, learn empathy, and then they take the chip out and Sarah Connor is going to smash the chip with a hammer. Yes. And then she doesn't. Also, it's a great scene because it uses Linda Hamilton's twin and like a That's right. fake head yeah. and a fake mirror. It's yeah. really good. Yeah, but mm. I guess it's just cut for time because in the final cut he just says, "My brain's a learning computer; I, it can learn." Yeah, I, I yeah, sure. But mm. I like I like the they have to go to that next step, uh-huh. and that's why they don't go rogue because they learn to love or whatever. Yeah, so right. Like, uh-huh. We'll stop that. We can, well, yeah, for anything. sure. Yeah, yeah. Does that mean they can never learn anything ever? It's also a very technically, like you said, it's a very technically demanding scene that they were just. That's James Cameron, I guess. James Cameron, yeah. Because it's an incredibly technically demanding, and they had to bring in Linda Hamilton's twin. Yeah, that's right. And all this other stuff. She lives in an attic, just wild up there. Wow. Just yeah. Do you think they'll bring her in for the new one? They might. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. 
But uh, that's going to be a good one, Mason. Just like we thought the Predator was going to be, the new Terminator is going to be yeah, yeah. crazy good. Oh, boy. But yeah, I guess that's James Cameron. He's just like, no, I don't care. Get rid of it. Yeah. I don't care. No one will ever see this. That's right. Also, there's a scene. Apparently, there's a there's a motorcycle chase in Batman 1989 that gets taken out. Was that out of the script or out of the? Was that when he puts on a ski mask and runs down the street? Yes. Is that that scene? Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, there's, I would have liked to say it's that. after he gets shot, isn't it? In the yeah, it's after the it's after the let's him. get nuts scene. That's my favorite. He chases scene. the Joker and his henchmen down the street. That's my favorite. In scene. his in his in his suit and his 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 beige double breasted suit. Surely they know it it's him because he was just wearing just that wearing that suit. suit. Yeah, exactly. Was he wearing body armor. But that's in the. I guess he was wearing body armor. I think he must have been. Yeah. yeah, but that's in the novelization, but not in the movie. Great. Yeah, it's mm. a good movie. I could do a lot of these. I think based on the novelizations that I saw as a kid, that I read as a kid. As a kid, I read a lot of novelizations of movies I never saw. Like right. I've read Stargate, but I've never seen Stargate. I think I I did a thing for some movies. I would read the novelization before I saw the movie. Yes, because it'd often be months before it came out. Yeah, right. I read Jurassic Park, the junior novelization. Oh right. Before I read. Before I think I, I read Independence Day before the movie came out. And you loved them both equally. Yeah. You, you talk about the new one, right? You read the yeah, novelization. Yeah, the resurgence, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, hello, one copy of Independence Day Resurgence, the novelization, please. A what? <laughs> <laughs> we don't have that. Oh, no one made that. I wrote it myself. <laughs> okay. I added the line, let's kick some alien ass. That's the best line of the movie. It is it's a good movie. It's a good line, right? You got a letter? Uh, this is from Camille Borowski. Who, oh, who, yeah, I met him. Who's uh, from Chicago who, uh, who came to Melbourne uh, quite recently great for bloke. a comedy festival and hung out. Saw all sorts of Planet Broadcasting shows. Had a great time. Mm. Uh, it's his friend Kaylee's birthday on Monday. He was wondering if he would give her a happy birthday dickhead. Now, here's the wrinkle. Although I don't know when she will hear it as she is listening to the show from the very beginning. Oh, my God. She wanted to learn about comic book movies. She's been watching them in release order that corresponds to the Weekly Planet episode she's up to. Incredible. Incredible, right? Yeah. Happy birthday, dickhead. You dickhead. <laughs> You made it this far. You've wasted your time. You've watched so much crap media and listened to two idiots. Oh, we're so dumb. What are you doing? And there was bad audio at the start. And you had and to currently. watch. And you had to watch the Predator. Oh. You're such an idiot. Look, absolutely. Whenever you listen to this, full credit if you have what. Like <laughs> bearing in mind the crushing disappointments you have experienced. <laughs> The journey you've been we've on. We've experienced them too, mate. We've experienced them too. I mean, good for you for going on that journey. We know what you feel. The very idea that you went, you know what? I think this might be a good movie and I'll watch it. That yeah. would be amazing. I think this Let is, us know when you do. I think it might be five years around now. Yeah. We've been doing this for five years. Yeah, yeah. That's nigh on half uh, a she decade. She would have been, she would have, she would have experienced the, just the highs and lows, maybe. Batman v Superman will be good. Yeah. Watch the trailers. Fantastic Four. Good. What's that going to be? Oh. I was just hungover every week. Yeah, I was just killing it, mate. Wasn't yeah. I? <laughs> she's gonna, she's gonna hear you go from a, a bloody a hungover every week party a party animal unit. to a to a wholesome family man over the course of many years. <laughs> wow, I'm gonna stay the same. Yeah, you should. I will. Yeah, nice. I went to a kid's birthday party on the weekend uh-huh. of two friends of mine, which I really like. Mm-hmm. But boy, let me tell you, there are a lot of dads there, Mason. How'd that go? Look at the risk of any of them hearing this. It's yes. the best. It was the best. <laughs> oh. it was the best time. Huh. Cough once if you hated their every experience. I hated every minute of being there. Wow. That was all right, actually. Oh, you're cool. It was actually all right. Terrific. Good cake. Yeah. That's what you go for, man. You do go for the cake. That's yeah. I'm mm-hmm. oh, not the friends. <laughs> all right. Uh, this is from Jonathan Cardwell. Uh, it says, hey, so he retreated, we retweeted this from Scott Snyder, who's... Works for DC, did a great Batman run, and a bunch of other stuff. Uh, Just he, to be clear, Scott Snyder, not Zack Snyder. No. Mm-hmm. He's on Vero. He's on a different <laughs> social media <laughs> he platform. Is, yeah. The one that no one's on. Yep. I still think Tom Cruise would make the best Joker. And Jonathan says, at first I balked, but this could work. Maybe? Got that crazy maniacal laugh down anyways. Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. I think it would work. Mm-hmm. Would he do it though? No. No, he wouldn't. Do- oh, I reckon if you pitched it to him as an acting challenge. Mm. And if you were like, listen, we're going to recreate that helicopter scene from the first Batman. <laughs> and you're going to, you're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to hang you from a helicopter and we're going to tie a really heavy stone gargoyle to you. Like your a leg. real one. Like a real one. <laughs> and you have to do all your lines to potentially fall off the helicopter off a cathedral to your death. I reckon he would 100% do it. Also, we're going to put you in the street and we're going to have a plane bearing down on you shooting a real machine gun, <laughs> gun and you have to shoot it out of the sky with a handgun with an impossibly long barrel. <laughs> if you don't do it, you will die. <laughs> and you'd be like, yes, my greatest, my greatest performance yet. 
I think that would be really good. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think it'd be great. I mean, the, what the thing about him is though, his smile is off kilter. He's got the center, center tooth. It's yeah. in the middle Didn't of his they head. Fix that? I think they fixed it a little bit, but there's still a bit going on there. Yeah. But I think that adds an element to I it. I agree. Yeah. I also, think... he's crazy ripped for his age. Yep, exactly. He's got versatile hair. He can do anything. Yeah. So I just feel I like think, I think that could totally work. Yeah. But again, again, it like you'd have to you you have to play against type, which is sort of toyed with in like the Mummy. Yes, where he was kind of like a shady character. I think but Collateral's I think, the best example. Yeah, I, there we go. We could you could pitch him. It's like Collateral, but super collateral. Except you have to hang from a gargoyle or whatever. Yeah, because like the Mummy, like he was like I'm kind of a shady guy, but then the Mummy didn't do that well and it was mm. critically panned. So maybe he's shying away from that. Sort was of it stuff critically like. plan critically panned and didn't do well because it was terrible? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just mm. to clarify. Yeah. Sorry, I killed your momentum there. No, that, that was it. No, I, I was tapering off. I was, I was fading fast. Don't even worry about it. Well, thank God I came in. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think he would make a great The Joker. Yeah. But I, don't, I think he'd be more like, he'd do a Hal Jordan or something like that. I don't think he'd do it. Yeah, I think he would want to be the hero. Yeah. Besides, mm-hmm. well, there's already 14 Joker movies happening. Yeah. So just watch any one of them. They could do it I'm Not There style where it's, you know, Bob Dylan. It's a different actor in every... That's every true. Scene, different Joker every scene. Because he's crazy. Because he's crazy. A series of Joker vignettes. I would definitely watch that. Mm-hmm, yep. Like, like that Batman Begins prequel animation. Did you ever yeah. see that? No. There's a whole lot of different stories yeah, cool. about Batman. It's great. But also, though, do you think he would do it because they went, oh, no, the reason we want you this is because you have a, like, the laugh of a lunatic and you're dead behind the eyes. Do you think, any, do you think that's, he'd do it for, do you think he's aware of that? Oh. And would do it? What if he was like, if he got it flaunted? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing the dead eyes. <laughs> doing the intense stare, yeah. <laughs> I got on him. That's the show, I think. It is the show. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Do the end, Mason. Thanks to everybody who's making my episode of Gamey Gamey Game the, the most downloaded episode. More than mine, Mason? I hope so. Everybody go and watch mine. It's on nah, Battlefront do 2. Nah, don't it's do it. has got Mark from Auntie Donna. No, what do no. you want? Jess Perkins is there from Do Go On. Nah, she's Sounds good. like a good lineup. We reference Jess Perkins from Do Go On, which is better than actually having Jess Perkins from Do Go On, in my opinion. How dare you yeah. take this anti Jess Perkins attitude? Into anyway, this give that a watch. That'd be terrific. Just go to YouTube and Click a game and search for Gamey Gamey Game. Jess Perkins is a treasure, man. She Mason. is, right? You son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But see, we're enjoying just referencing her. <laughs> Why bring the actual Jeff, Jess Perkins in to sully this? You know what I mean? Fair point. Yeah. Uh, anyway, thanks everybody for listening and subscribing. Smash that like button on Gamey Gamey Game. <laughs> My episode of Gamey Gamey Game. Doesn't feel good, does it? Nah, it's to say that. Hit that subscribe button. It's still not There's good. so many good episodes. Hit subscribe on that. It's good stuff. Sure, yeah. Should, then, yeah. I got no stake in it, so I can say it all I like. That's true. Um, uh, anyway, thanks everybody for listening to this show. Yes. And telling people about it's how we get to whatever number episode we've gotten to. Yeah. Yeah, we did it. Uh, let's see if you want to support the show. Actually, if you want to contact the show, Weekly Planet Pod on Facebook and Gmail and Twitter and Bandcamp. Uh, let's see, you can also go to the Planet Broadcasting Great Mates Facebook group if you want to join in some great conversations over there. That all kinds of pop culture stuff. Yep. Uh, you can also go to planetbroadcasting.com, sign up to our newsletter by the great Rob Collings. He's he- killing it. He's, where is he going? No, he's killing it. Oh, he's killing it. Yeah, he's killing but it. But where man. is he going? Straight to the top. He's straight to the top. And he's also much. at the Weekly Planet on Twitter. Yep. I'm Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. I'm Mr. Sunday Movies at Twitter. We're also on Instagrams. You can find us. Mr. Sunday Graham. And Wikipedia Mick Mesa, Graham. whatever it is. Yep. Yeah, Wikipedia Graham. <laughs> uh, is that anything I'm going to say? I don't know if it is. Yeah. Um, just search my name. It comes up, I think. I, I just want to see if Wikipedia Graham is. Okay, terrific. I should have taken that. But it's too late. You could use that as your alt account. It's definitely something already, I'd yeah. imagine. Uh, yeah, it's probably true. Yeah, it is. Three followers. Huh. Mm. You could probably buy it often. Uh, let's see. Uh, if you want to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies if you want to chuck in a buck. Chuck in a buck. Uh, we'd, we'd take a buck. We'd take all your anything, money. Anything you wouldn't miss. We'll yeah. take that. Keep the, keep the lights on in this wonderful man cave and in the new man cave. And if you want to see the man cave, oh, you bloody well can. Yep. We're, that's the winding up at the end of the month. We've got the Care Australia... Uh, campaign. It should be out by now. That's on my Instagram. Just click on there. Click on there. Click on there. And that... Don't add any amount, you'll get bonus content. You get a bloody, a bloody, the Q&A. Two Q&As. You'll get $100. What? What? Yep. Huh. Everyone gets $100. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. Is that legally binding, is it? Yes, Mason. <laughs> it's You're really doubling down sorted. on this. Huh. No one listens to the end of the show. I can say well, actually, that's very true. That's very true. <laughs> if anything, then you probably lowballed it by making up $100. You could have You're said right. $1,000. $105. Wow! <laughs> uh, so you can do that. Uh, bloody, what else? What if else? you want to send through the versus thing, it's next. That would be, be next great. Unless we've got a lot of Captain Marvel stuff. 
Yeah. In which case, we'll probably there's a we might do that if they surprise release Captain Marvel into cinemas. We'll yes. probably watch that and talk about that instead. Yeah, we could also maybe do some if we, if we wanted to, we could read some stories this week and talk about that, or maybe yeah, we could cool. save that for later. Um, let's see. Thank you to the Brute and the Basilisk and Rackham for all our musical themes. We love them every week. We do. Uh, we've got some T-shirts on T Public. A lot of people are buying that I'm Fine design, which That's is right. very I mean, good. Be meaning to put up the new. It's your boy Dick Face. Yeah, nice. One on there. I yeah, need cool. to do that, and I haven't uh-huh. yet. But we'll quickly take care of. Took care Terrific. of that. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, that's about it, I think. That's about it. Oh, we've got the Amazon affiliate link in our episode description. Oh, yeah. If you want to buy that. all the Predator movies, don't buy the new one. Don't, yeah, buy, don't buy the new one. How is it the worst one? Yeah, no, it is, isn't it? Yeah. I was going to say worse than Predator 2, but it's not. Predator 2 at least has novelty value. I wonder, though, if this is going to become that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Give, it's it's, give it some distance. You don't know, maybe. do you? Yeah. yeah. yeah no, but then the pressure is off because. Mm. You're just watching it on your TV. You just one click and you've got it. Yeah. You don't have to trek out to the cinema for it. Mm. Mm. Some idiot sitting next to you. Exactly right. All right. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Grab that gem, you guys. We will see you next week. $105. Don't forget. Goodbye. <laughs> Cha-ching. Cha-ching. <laughs> this podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. What do I say at the end of this? <laughs> well, I don't listen to it. You have to add it in. Okay. So I, I thought I was going to trick him. Oh, and then yeah. forget I it. I don't remember what I say. <laughs> Fuck you, Mason. <laughs> This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.